Bullshit. He watches his mother shoot his father three times in the back. I'm Mr. Blackman, there's the puppies. I look like Quasimodo to you. What about Tony Lauer? What about China? Big speech of the death man. Damn it, I hate this show. I <laughs> just hate it. Such shit. The Egotistical Eight, it was called. Yeah. <laughs> That's the title of Flash on the Screen. The Egotistical Eight. Now, when I think of great titles inv- involving numbers, I think The Dirty Dozen, or The Magnificent Seven, or The Three Amigos. The Egotistical Eight. No, does not roll off the tongue. They announced Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle versus Steiner and Petey. Why? No idea. Cause. Also, two qualifying matches in the Deuces Wild Tournament. The shittiest tournament in wrestling history. Seriously. All those shitty tournaments in WCW, this takes the cake. <laughs> Machine Guns versus Curry Man and Shark Boy. Machine Guns are like the most popular act in this entire company. And the best. Like, everybody goes nuts for them. They love them so much that they booed the Curry Man. Think about that. Yes. And so what happens? They always lose. And the other most popular act would be Curry Man, as you noted, who who got booed here, but he's still beloved. And Machine Guns got knocked out of the tournament last week. And here they are wrestling Curry Man. That means Curry Man didn't even get a chance to fight to be in the tournament. No. So, Curry Man and Shark Boy, not an established team. No. Christian Cage and Rhino, established. Established. So, Shelly made a comeback. All of a sudden, out came Steiner and his posse. Beat up both guns on his own. Yeah. First, PD got killed, and then Scott killed everybody by himself. Yeah. And then he cut a promo telling Angle not to disrespect him because Angle, because Angle did, he cost him the match last week. And said Angle had been added to the match of sacrifice. He didn't care because he was going to win the title from Joe and then take Angle's medals and make him his bitch. And then Angle hit the ring with a big brawl. And as God is my witness, he put Scott Steiner in the ankle lock and Scott Steiner tapped. Not only did these two men touch before the pay-per-view, Angle has already beaten him in 30 seconds. Woo! 10,000 buys. I'm downgrading. <laughs> I'm downgrading to 10,000 buys. Who could possibly want to see this show? See, I no longer watch Impact in those turns. I can't. I can't. I cannot watch Impact in, in, with, with that thought process in mind or I want to stab myself. So I just watch it. Does this entertain me? And the machine guns portion of this segment entertain me. Scott Steiner killing them, less so. The part with Kurt, not at all. And my final notes in this segment just read, this made no sense. No shit. We had... Borash telling AJ that he needed to find a partner for the Deuces Wild Tournament. You see, Tomko has been suspended because he booked himself in a match in Japan and they didn't want him to go. He went. Good for him. And so they've suspended him. They've punished him for working in Japan. The angle is that he got hurt in an MMA match, so they said. In Japan. And anyway, uh, I had no idea. I, I couldn't even digest this when, when uh, wait, wait a second, where am I here? Some shit happened. What happened here, Vinny? Cornette came out. Cornette came out. And he came out to announce that later he will announce the eight men and the egotistical eight. That's right. He, and he told, told AJ to find a partner. That's right. Okay. So, I wrote all of this down. Like, I wrote everything that happened in the first 15 minutes down. And as soon as I hit the final period, I still had no idea what happened in the first 15 minutes. That's bad. So, then we had Tanae in the ring with Team Prawn explaining the woman's Ladder match, head shaving Delia Bob, wanted to know their thoughts. They said they they didn't sweat anyone because if they did, their makeup would run. That was funny. Okay, I'm glad you thought so. I laughed. It's the only thing I laughed at in this whole segment here. Then they showed the girls with the shaved heads on the Titan Tron. Seen it in WWE a hundred times. Gail and ODB came out. They had a brawl. Angelina Boy, was that a wretched brawl. Nip slip. Bad girls were sent packing. ODB called them hookers, challenged them to a match for later. Said one of them would end up in their favorite position, flat on her back. I predicted it would be velvet. I ended up being right. There you go. Team Prawn came out in jeans. This was buys. Yes, it was. They looked fine this evening, and and that's where they left the comment on because I couldn't focus on anything else. There was a point where they said, "We are the beautiful people. You can look but not touch." And I just said, "Deal. I will take that compromise anytime." 
AJ was looking for his partner, tried to talk to Booker T. Booker told him to just bounce. Okay. All right. AJ AJ goes into Booker T's locker room and says, I want to be your partner. Booker says, who are you? What are you doing here? You a fan? Do you have a pass? He didn't know who he was. No, he did not know who AJ Styles was. So right. a, AJ ran down his resume, all the titles he's won, the, the multiple world championships he's won for this company, and Booker still insisted whether he was a fan. That's dumb thing number one. Dumb thing number two, Booker treated this fan like shit. <laughs> <laughs> he buried him, told him to bounce and get out. I don't have time for you right now. Yes. He was a dick to this fan. What a horrible baby face. Interview with the new generic blonde with Joe and Nash. And they wanted to know how Joe thought of the three-way. And he said he had no problem. He loved competition. That's why he did this. And after he left, Nash goes, what about the money? Ha <laughs> ha. Nash is there to hold Joe's belt. Kaz and Eric Young versus LAX. This was a qualifying match. Here's my question. Something in my eye. No, it's a, just a dramatic pause. Here's my question. My eye is bothering me. Hold on. God damn it. How annoying. Oh, yeah. So we're talking about this stupid Speaking match, right? You're annoying. What? Right, the Eric Young angle. Oh. Well, this here's something. This is why this was so goddamn stupid. So let me get this straight. There's a Deuces Wild tag bullshit thing thingamajigger at the pay-per-view mm -hmm. to determine new champions. Right. Why? Because Eric Young... Fucked up, the basically. Sure. Why would you put them in a qualifying match again? I don't know. Why, if they're the reason that you have to have this goddamn tournament in the first place, would you put them back in the fucking tournament? I, I, I don't know. This goes again goes back to my point. I cannot watch this show in those terms. My brain will blow up. So they had a match, and uh, and thank God Kaz and Eric Young. Actually, I can't even say that. <laughs> I'll talk about this. You later. were happy for a second, but yes, they they actually had a really fun match. LAX are also awesome, and it's not going to happen. But the feud for the tag team title should be LAX versus the Machine Guns. It would be great every time. We don't get that. Fuck you, TNA. But what they did here was 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 a, they had a fun match. The right team won, that being LAX, and then they called out Hector Guerrero. Yeah. And they called him into the ring. They said, hey, your brother was cool. <laughs> and everyone chanted Eddie's name. And they said, don't get me wrong, we also like you, but we want you, we want you to be in our corner at the pay-per-view to lead us to the tag team titles. And Hector did his Eddie impression, which always creeps me out a lot, but he agreed. And so Hector Guerrero will be in their corner representing the entire Guerrero family, and there you go. You know, this is why this was stupid. I wanted Kaz and Eric to win. Tell you why. Even though it's stupid they're even being allowed back in because they fucked the whole thing up in the first place. But later we had AJ and Super Eric as a team, and they qualified. Now to me, the entire point of this bullshit is to lead to a match where Super Eric and Eric Young are on opposite teams. That's the entire point of this, is it not? Clearly it is not. Why would you book this whole thing if that wasn't the gag you were leading to at the end? So that you could have tag team champions who hate each other. That's the goal. Well, why not just make them hate each other? Because they all do anyway. They had to sell pay-per-views, Brian. I don't know. It's just retarded. We should have had Kaz and Eric Young versus Super Eric and AJ. That should have had to be in the finals, and they would have had to fucking book their way out of a hole. That's what they should have had to do. Instead, they got rid of Kaz and Eric Young, and now bullshit. They sure showed you. So Team Prawn, ODB, OAJ, and Nash's office. Wait, I'm missing a lot of stuff here. I don't care. None of you care either. <laughs> Tracy was there. Treat Team Prawn and uh, ODB and Gail Kim in a match. It was a tag team match. And uh, I'm just giving up. <laughs> talk about this. Does this mean we don't have to watch the show anymore? I'd be fine show. with that. All right, let's start with what, what Brian missed. There's a segment in Cornette's office. I'm doing something else. Tracy Brooks was harassing him about Christ knows what. He told her to fuck off, and she left. Uh, Matt Morgan showed up. He said he wanted to be in the Deuces Wild Tournament, and Cornette said, look, I know you want to be in the egotistical eight. And as soon as those words left his lips, Morgan looked at the camera like, Jesus Christ, that name sucks. And then Kip James came in to beat him up to get revenge, because you recall Matt Morgan cowardly sneak attacked him last week. And so Kip was here to, to valiantly, fi valiantly fight back, although he's the heel. So way to go, TNA. That was that segment. Team Prawn was shown walking to the ring. The camera was behind them in an ass level. Buys. That was good. AJ went up to Kevin Nash. He said, hey, Kevin Nash, I want you to be my tag team partner. 
Nash was flirting with Christy Hemme. Christy got up and the Rock and Rave Infection was going to face AJ and his partner later, and she told them they were going to rock their world or something, and she did this in a loud, screeching manner, and, and Nash said, well, that killed it. Because Nash is funny. No one ever said Nash was not funny. and I can't do this anymore. I just want you to try and recap the show, and I will jump in with any comments that I remember. So we switched roles. I, I, seriously, I try and look at these notes, and it is a fucking jumble of, of misinformation. And it's not my fault. So I just quit. All right. Good. Let's not watch the show anymore. No, recap. Ah, God damn it. Throw in some comments. All right. So anyway, uh, Nash told AJ he would not be his partner. He did hint that he was going to beat Joe. So they've already started dissension among that crew. Yes. He said there was money in the, the heavyweight title. They said, well, Joe's the heavyweight champ. And he said, yeah. And he left. So great. At some point, we get Samoa Joe and Kevin Nash. That'll suck. That will suck a dick. That will suck bad. All right. Here's my insightful comment. <laughs> I'm going to just play the Vinny role. <laughs> Thank you, wrestling expert. Yes. At least you're not certified. So mm-hmm. Team Prawn, who I think we just call Team Jeans from now on for the way they looked in those jeans, but Team Prawn faced ODB and Gale. <laughs> team Jeans. There was, I don't know, they, they had a match. A Velvet Sky got pinned with just a power slam. ODB's finisher. And we, I, mean, I, I we, called it. I know we just talked about how a backslide can be a finisher in 2008 if you beat anyone with it, but this hole's not over yet, or this move is not over yet. And so when ODB hit just this... Just a just a power slam and, and pin her opponent. Boy, it looked lame. I do got to say that I, I I will begrudgingly admit that that Velvet Sky is improving, and that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask Fair for. Enough. And all, She's getting a little better. And I, I I I don't know why people love ODB, but they absolutely love her. So cool. And then Roxy came out and and th- three she threw one of Team Prawn. I don't know which one, but she. Threw her to the ring where she played the ping pong ball for ODB and Gail and Roxy, and they beat her up for a while. Three out of one for the baby faces, but ah, who cares? And, and then the, the, the baby faces celebrated. They were all happy, and Don said, "Well, they're gonna they're gonna have to fight at the pay per view. It'll be different than when it's every, every person for themselves." So, let's see here. <laughs> I don't remember this segment. All I wrote down was JB wants to play cards with Rude. Hilarity ensues. <laughs> oh, it was the uh, there's a segment with I remember, Robert, I remember Robert it ended. And James Storm. I remember how it ended. And AJ, yeah. yeah see, uh, James Storm, Robert Rude, and Jacqueline are in a locker room. Rude is reading the newspaper, the stock section, because he's rich, you see. James Storm is drinking beer because he's a drunk cowboy. AJ comes in. He wants to be their partner. He, or he wants them to be his partner in the tournament tonight to fill Tomko's place. Rude basically says, look, we both know we're in the egotistical eight. We have nothing to gain by being your partner, so you're on your own. Then they left. They left their own room. <laughs> they abandoned their own room, and here was AJ sitting there, and then a mystery figure <laughs> yeah. appeared. I just love this segment because this cameraman's entire role tonight, okay? This is this stuff. No, his entire role was to follow AJ and document him attempting to find a partner. Like Jim Cornette said, AJ's looking for a partner. You, cameraman Joe, follow him around and document this. This guy documents everything except the one spot where AJ looks up and sees a man and says, You'll be my partner? Yeah? Yeah. Doesn't doesn't pan over. No, no. Mystery. <laughs> we, and we just, all we saw was Jerry Borash and AJ Styles marking out, basically. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, as we've been doing the show, I've been tossing my notes on the floor. I had to retrieve one because there's something I forgot to mention. During the LAX match, Don West said the following words. Because, Mike, that's what happens when you snitch. <laughs> that is street wisdom from Don West. Yes, indeed. And I thought I thought that was important <clears throat> enough to share. What the hell happened next? Rock Rave Infection versus AJ Styles and his partner, who, as you mentioned, was Super Eric. You know what? I can think of no better team. It's the two biggest geeks in TNA. Yeah. They're Team Geek. They actually had a fun match. And I, and I, and Eric Young as Super Eric is such a better wrestler than Eric Young. It's not even funny. Just keep him in the goddamn costume. Everyone seems to work better in a costume in this, co- in this company. <laughs> that is true. Curry it's, man. It's because they, they, when they're, ha- when they have a mask on, they know no one can see that they're in TNA. Yeah. And they're not depressed. And they're no longer embarrassed. They're no longer embarrassed, no longer shamed, and so they can just go have fun matches. Yeah. So yes, everyone wants to wear a mask in this company. I'm fine with that. This was a fun match. My favorite part, of course, was when the crowd chanted Rock and Rave, which indicates that I'm not the only one who likes them, and that's good news. <laughs> Eric won when, with the DVD. Uh, the other key point was Christy at one point tried to whore herself to AJ, and AJ said, no, you're no Karen. 
<laughs> I didn't hear that. Now, so you're Karen. And the announcers then explained, well, he's talking about Karen Angle. Oh. Thanks, guys. Thank God. We're not to figure that out. No. Okay. <laughs> Where's he from? Stay. You know what? When this show ended, I didn't hate it. I'm going back over it now because I watched it. As noted, with the frame of mind of does what appear on TV does does what is appearing on TV entertain me? That was my frame of mind. And now I'm going back and looking over what happened. This show was really bad. No shit. This was a very bad show. Thanks, Vinny. There's a problem with staying in the dark somewhere. He declared this place to be a loony bin. Nothing made sense. Uh, he and Booker are apparently fighting again now. I don't know why. I could have sworn they got along last week. This flummoxed me. Staying left. <laughs> they taught, they recapped TNA's innovations. The six-sided ring. The six sides of steel. Ultimate X, Elevation, Me- Elevation X. And now their new one, the Terror Dome. They said it was 30 feet high. Basically, it's a cage with a roof. And the roof in the center of it has, and I quote, a tiny hole. <laughs> yes. You have to climb the cage to get out of the hole, or use a ladder to get out of the hole. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I just hope it. I just want, I want Black Rain in there. I want Bubba Ray Dudley in there. I want all these. I want Abyss in there. I'm trying to get through the tiny hole. Yes. That's where I see the humor it in this. Gets stuck. It gets stuck like Winnie the Pooh. Yes. Yeah. That's where I see the potential for this match. Ah, oh, what the hell else? <laughs> for no good reason, Daisy Hayes wrestled cheerleader Melissa. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. It was perfectly fine entertainment. I just don't think this company needs any more people on its roster. I thought, it, I thought it was fine. I thought the only problem with it was they sort of did like a a a shimmer style match in front of an audience that had no idea what was going on. Yeah. It, it actually it hit me. I was like, this is a really good match. And then Daisy Hayes went for the heart punch yeah. and nobody had any idea what was going on. No. And I was like, oops. <laughs> They just did a ma- they probably did a match they have done three or four times on Shimmer shows and just did it for this TNA crowd and it was fine people people were okay with it. Chan, let's go Melissa. They just chanted, let's go Melissa so, so she so she is over. I did like that Melissa won this match with of all moves the cop killer, which is of course homicide's finisher in this sure. very same company. That I was, also could have. Been I was better. actually surprised that nobody nobody made any sort of heckling comments to Melissa since she's Raish Saeed. Apparently they fooled them all. I can't fathom that Have nobody knows. Have you seen the people in this crowd? Well, it's it's Orlando residents. Yeah. I'm sorry, that was mean. I apologize to all you Orlando people, but the TNA crowd's the worst of you. <laughs> That's for certain. So she hit the cop killer. She won the move. I grabbed my pen, and before I could set pen to paper to document what happened, Mike Tanae screamed, to the back! Yeah. That was your big win, cheerleader Melissa. Way to go. To the back, where Lauren interviewed the Steiners. <laughs> this was awesome. This I have to admit. <laughs> All I can tell you is this involves Scott Steiner doing math. Yep. And when the segment was done, he calculated he had a 136 and two-thirds percent chance of winning. That's all I can tell you. And two-thirds percent. 136 and two-thirds percent. Not even, he didn't have ran off to the decimal point. He didn't say point seven. No, two thirds. Scott Steiner of all people, comedy geek. Ten thousand buys, everyone. Ten thousand buys. <laughs> it entertained me. Yeah. So then we had Angle and Joe as a team versus Peter Williams and Scott Steiner. Don West early in this match said the strangest thing I've ever heard a commentator say. <laughs> it was a massive screw up, and they just left it in like it was a live show or something. He said, and I quote. They've got until September 11th to worry about beating off up on each other. Now, I had to listen to this about 18 times, first of all, to make sure that's actually what he said. I'm almost positive it is. If any of you have, if any of you have drop technology, you can capture this moment. September and 11th? Yes. Now, I thought, well, that's an odd thing to say for various reasons. First of all, it's currently May. That indicates this feud is going, they won't be able to touch each other for four months or whatever it is. Second of all, of course, September 11th, not Wrestling does not come to mind when I think of that event, right. uh, that date. That's a very poor choice of words. I finally figured out the pay-per-view is on May 11th. Don said September on accident. Then he compounded his error when he said, beat off up on each other. <laughs> this this was all I could think about for the rest of this match, making sure, did he really say that? Is that actually what Don West said here in this national television program? <laughs> and to the best of my knowledge, it is. So, Wow. Uh, they got the heat on Joe. There was, of course, a commercial break immediately afterwards. Sure. Uh, and afterwards, there really wasn't, well. <laughs> oh, the whole building built to, to Joe having the potential to make the hot tag, but he just didn't. Yeah. So, stupid baby face. Here was what I wrote down in the middle of, as they had heat on Joe. No bullshit, just a good match. 
And then immediately, yes, he went to, he went to go tag in Kurt and then bas- essentially gave him a middle finger and just kept wrestling and made his own comeback. So yes, he's stupid and cocky. Yeah. What a shitty babyface this champion is. Yeah. So then of course, Kurt beat up Joe. Steiner came back and beat up Kurt or something. They, I do know. Joe pinned Petey. Joe pinned Petey with a muscle buster. Fine. Petey was there to do the job. Angle that was beat fine. up Joe. Yes. And then Steiner hit the ring with a pipe and sent everybody packing and then hit Joe with it. I, I, somehow, when this is over, and I don't know how, especially because what, what happened earlier, but this just intrigued me. That the, the, these three men would just be wailing on each other at the pay per view. So, to a degree, it intrigued you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe, you know why? Because I had forgotten what happened earlier. In turning my brain off, I had forgotten what happened an hour and a half before this segment. But, yes, just, just, just there's going to be three dudes. They all hate each other. You don't know. They're going to be stabbing each other in the back constantly and teaming up constantly. And, and, and I'm just a mark for three ways is what it comes down to. But, hey, there you go. How could anyone be a mark for a three-way? For that very reason. Because it's three dudes beating on each other? There are, there are constantly alliances being forged and then broken. <laughs> you expect that in TNA. <laughs> I know it's a surprise. <laughs> Come on now. Final segment was Cornette announcing the eight people they were, and I uh, let's see here: Matt Morgan, Kip James, B.G. James, James Storm, Booker T, Robert Roode, and Sting. And then he goes, "Oh wait, that's only seven. Here's the magic number eight. And out came Awesome Kong. Yes, a woman. And uh, now it's the end of the show. Everybody going, "My God, what does this mean?" And I mentioned this earlier today, but I'll mention it again here. I met Awesome Kong, in fact. I, I carpooled with her to the IWC show. You sent me a text message saying, I'm going to the show with Awesome Kong and Davey Richards. And I just thought, that right there sounds like the best stable of all time. There's a road trip for you. Oh, man. Chico, Davey Richards, and Awesome Kong. Now, we went into an AM, PM, some other stuff here, and so I saw Awesome Kong in, in, in normal society, so to speak, and she's not that big. Hmm. She's heavier than you, Vinny. Okay. Not nearly as tall. Okay. She's about 5'9 or 5'10. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Now, when you're in the ring with 5'2 Gail Kim and all these diminutive women, you look like a monster. And she has looked like a monster. I was one of the first people that said there should be an awesome Kong Kern Angle feud. You actually said she should win the world championship. I did. Now, now I was told not a good idea because she's not really that big. She would be exposed in there with Kurt Angle, and and uh, you know I was like, okay, well. Anyway, the point is, I saw her for one day, one day, and I can tell you that in this tournament she's going to be exposed. BG fucking James, Kip James, giant, <laughs> Kip James, Matt Morgan, Matt Morgan, all of these guys, gigantic. Well, yeah, I, I was actually fine with this when it happened. Um, I'm trying to think of the smallest dude there. It would have Storm? To, it, it would rude. have to be James Storm, actually. Yeah. James Storm. So, anyway, the point is, she's going to be exposed because she's not all that big. That's bad. And I just get frustrated because I saw her for one day, and I know this, and they see her every single day, and, and it, nobody it, has a clue. It didn't occur to them. No. That's they, sad. I mean, she'd have to be in there with Petey Williams... And who else is just tiny in that company? Sanjay. Sanjay or the Machine Guns. That's about it. In there, even in there with Kurt Angle. I mean, think about this. She's big and heavy, but she would be eye to eye with Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound much of a monster then, does it? Sure doesn't. Looking up at Matt Morgan, almost straight up. Looking up at BG James. Oh, hi. This is a bad idea. Mm. This is a bad idea. That's sad. This is no buys. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but I hate impact. Well, this week probably was not a good week for you then. Because this was even... No, this show was a great week. Why do you say that? I'll tell you why. This fucking show, everybody, got an 0.9 rating. Why, that's going down, isn't it? An 0.9. I believe someone said it's been eight months since the last time the show got an 0.9. Why did the show get an 0.9, you ask? Because it sucked. 
Impact has been really bad before, okay? I've done a lot of rants about Impact, and I've gotten really, really, really mad in the past. I don't even know if I'm going to get mad reviewing this show, because this show was at a level of badness that it's it's just, I, I can't even get mad. Uh, yeah. I don't even have the words to describe this. It's so bad, it's beyond. <laughs> this was r- without merit. <laughs> had no redeeming qualities. This, and, and oddly enough, this is I, I believe this is the first episode of Impact I've ever watched where I was up doing one of two things. Drinking or doing yoga to relieve stress. I am flabbergasted yeah. at this this show. And I watched this and I did not have a heart attack. <laughs> because it's like it has now reached a level where it is so bad that you can't get angry at it. You just you're in awe of the badness. That's part of it. That is certainly you know what part I mean? of it. You're just in awe that something could be so poor. Just so poor. It has to be intentional. Th- this sabotage. This right here <laughs> is it's it's funny. It's funny because it has now reached a level it has surpassed its worst. You know, we've made this comparison before, but it's never been this true. If I tried to do some of the stuff if I tried to do the dumbest stuff possible, the dumbest you could show, not do it. they would be dumber than me. You could not do it. My brain is too big. I will decide after I review the show here on the air. But I really think... Now, this is not the worst show they've ever done. They've done some bad, bad shows. This may be the single dumbest show that they've ever produced in almost six years now. (laughs) Certainly, It will be six years in June, and I've never seen a show as awful as this one. And they got a point nine, and that brings me such fucking joy. Look back, um, look at, think about this. We had a go home show. The last go home show they did before a pay per view was awesome. I don't remember it. It was the build for Angle and Joe. They spent the entire show building it up. They had training vignettes. They had That's the whole right. okay, yes, yes, yes. It was awesome. Then they had a pay-per-view that was great. Yes. Or at least everything worked out perfectly. The main event was awesome. It was a wonderful... It was such a great week for TNA. I was like, my God, they finally figured it out. They went from the absolute peak of the mountain. And some people said, how can you go from the peak of the mountain and just go back to being so bad? They didn't. They went from the peak of the mountain to the bottom of the valley. To the bottom of the sea. To the bottom of the fucking ocean. They drilled into the earth. To the core. <laughs> somewhere they broke it through the crust or somewhere in the mantle area. They went from outer space to the core of the earth in a month. Yes. This is the worst. This is the worst. I look back now to that, that uh, tournament that they did in WCW for the world title. With that was Bret Hart. awesome. That was great. That was fucking amazing compared to this. Let's talk about this show. The show opened without a recap, and that made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> because no they recap, do it. no recap is better than the shit they usually do for a recap. So I will say this: that's an improvement. Angle and Steiner versus Joe and Nash was what they built for the main event. I could have sworn Angle and Joe were a team last week. Now they're enemies. Yes. I don't care. I don't care. Everybody, don't explain it to me. I don't give a fuck. There's a pay per view this Sunday. Cornette called out the egotistical eight. No one knows why they're egotistical, by the no. way. It's a mystery. Well, the funny thing is, he named them egotistical before he had put them into the group. Yeah. So he had this name, and then apparently he went out in search of men with big egos. Yes. Morgan, Billy Gunn, B.G. James, James Storm, Booker T., Robert Roode, Sting, and Awesome Kong. Cornette said everybody had been wanting to know who their partner was except Sting, so he was going to draw names now. He said they were going to draw one team now, one team at the top of the hour, and two at the pay-per-view. Even this, even this has to be complicated. Yes. They can't just draw fucking teams. No. They can't just draw them all tonight. No. No. They have to set, you know it's going to be one now, one later, one of the opening of the pay-per-view, and then one, one later in the pay-per-view. Yeah. It, everything has to be as complicated as possible. Now, as you all well recall, it's the lethal lottery. It's random. It's deuces wild. Yes. Okay. In this completely random draw... The first team was Sting and James Storm. Holy cow! Who have been feuding for weeks. What are the odds? Who would have ever thought? I cannot believe such a thing has happened here on this television show. Storm said that he wasn't Sting's friend. He didn't want to be his partner. They got into a brawl. And so Cornet added that the teams drawn tonight were going to have matches later with their partner. Yeah! 
So it's and then be- and then in three more days they're going to team up for the world championship. Yes, it that's is. dumb. Sting and Storm in a no DQ match. This is the stupidest tournament I've ever ever seen. <laughs> Without question. It blows everything else out of the water with established teams like Christian and Rhino and also AJ and Super Eric and then random draw teams or everyone. Well, we'll get into this, but yes, just keep in mind, a team was drawn. It turned out, turned out to be two guys who were feuding. They got into a fight. That was the segment. Yes. Just remember that, everyone. Just remember that. Borash interviewed Steiner and said that tonight he would coexist with Angle so they could take out Samoa Joe. Remember this, by the way. Angle walked up and said, yes, tonight we'll be a team. He said, we're going to kill Joe. I'm going to get the belt and then defend it against you at the pay-per-view. We can kill each other. Maybe he didn't say the belt. I I don't know what happened. All I know (laughs) is there's a pay-per-view Sunday, and I'm not sure where in this three-day period he's going to win the belt. But remember that. They both agreed we're going to team up to take out Joe. That, 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 That is the most important key. Okay. Got all that, everybody? All right, good. So... They explain the Thunderdome, which is a, a domed cage with a hole in the top. All I got out of this video is that there will be a shark involved. Make sure he starts swinging around. Uh oh. I can only wish. Count me out. <laughs> All I can think is, I can only imagine how much they paid for this fucking that dome. That's also a great question. <laughs> for a show that is going to do 20,000 buys. Where, who, this is the biggest money loser of a pay-per-view that they'll ever have. Mark my words. Do you think the the Terror Dome is getting a bigger payoff than any of the wrestlers in the show? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. This Terror Dome is, had to have been 50 grand or something like that. This, this pay-per-view will lose money because of this Terror Dome. Because of this fucking dome. And the no buys. Well, that, that, yes. Pete Williams and Shark Boy. Oh wait, no. Oh God, it's a six man. In a six man non title match, Pete, Shark Boy, Jimmy Rave, Johnny Divine, Consequences, Creed, and Shark Boy. Curry Man was great. He was in here as well, I guess. I didn't write him down, but he was in here somewhere. Anyway, they announced that Rick Steiner was going to be at the pay per view, and Frank Trigg would do the commentary. Thumbs up. That's good news. Curry ran wild. Uh, Pete now has a hair and mustache, looking like Scott Steiner. So. uh... So, totally low rent. So everybody did a finisher, all of this. And anyway, in the melee, Rave hit Petey with a knee to the face and broke his orbital bone or his cheekbone or some bone. And my God, does it suck to be him. And, you know, they always they always say that shit happens in the heat of the battle. But uh, I never hurt anybody. <laughs> I didn't. No. Shit, you got hurt against me, it was your own fault. It's called careless, okay? You know, sometimes shit does happen, but uh, Jimmy Ray fucking came flying in with this knee to the face. And I don't want to blame anybody, but I'm going to blame Jimmy Ray. Fucking be careful, people, for Christ's sake. If the spot you're doing is a knee to the face, you got to be way more careful than you are doing, say, a suplex. Yes, yeah, so if a guy is offering his face to you, yes, you're protect offering, him. You're offering your fucking face, and you're going to fly in with a knee. And it wasn't like he tripped. No. It wasn't like Petey was out of position. No. He just hit him really fucking hard. Hate that. If you're going to use a running knee, wear knee pads. And it sucks because I remember Jimmy Rave was, was uh, one of the reasons he got out of ROH was because people were hurting him right and left. Now he goes in and fucking flies in with a flying knee and hits somebody right in the eyeball. God, that pisses me off. Anyway, Hoyt uh, distracted somebody, and then Rave, of all people, pinned Curry Man, and uh, then Christie tried to hump everybody. Uh, it is a travesty that Jimmy Rave pinned Curry Man to win this match, but I did love the Rock and Roll Infections party. Yeah. I'm the only one who likes them, I've decided. You absolutely are. Barash interviewed Sting about the Storm match. So they were going to beat each other so bad that they would end up friends, and then they would win the belts together. I swear to God that's what he said. Well... In Sting's defense, I had seen recall once Tito Ortiz saying that he is always a better friend with someone after they had a good fight. Well, that's true. That's true. So, but they um, were going to work out the differences differences here, man to man, and then they would move on. That's true. So I I will forgive this segment. That's it also is, the real world. This is the fake world of wrestling. It did not make me and want to see you it. Every fucking person on this show is going to fight each other and be friends afterwards. Well, that's never happened before, actually. No. So then we add Cornette with the... Uh, and the other thing also is in real life... In, well, I'm just going to move on. We had uh, Cornette with the girls, all of whom were bitching 
He said, I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a bad guy. I'm a compassionate person. He signed a pole match for later. Made sure to throw in a sexual innuendo there. With the winner getting immunity from the head shaving. That's right. Now, as bad as it sounded on paper, I will at least give them credit that, although I, I, could, I was trying to figure out what the fuck this even meant, he basically said if the immunity girl lost to the pay-per-view, then the runner-up would get shaved. I don't understand a thing he was saying. All I know is that the bottom line is someone's getting shaved. That's it. They were very clear on that point. They were at least very clear on that point. Because from reading the spoilers, it came across like they are doing a match where you may get screwed if you buy the pay-per-view. Yes. You may buy the pay-per-view and find out that the girl actually doesn't lose her hair. They at least hammered it home that no matter what happens, even if the immunity girl wins, somebody's getting shaved. So. All right. So let's review... But I'm trying to figure out what that means. So are you telling me that, let's say it's you and me, okay. and I have immunity. Right. You win, Right. but I have immunity. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you get shaved? <laughs> I don't know. See, that's why I want to, let's review this match now at the pay-per-view as we understand it. There's a bunch of girls. They're going to have, it starts as a battle royal, right? Yes. Okay, it starts as a battle royal until it gets down to two. Yes. Then they bring in a ladder. Yes. The last two have a ladder match. The winner gets a title shot. The loser of the, of the ladder match, who was actually the second best person in the Battle Royal, yes. then gets her head shaved, yes. unless she is the one who has the immunity, in which case, and I quote, the runner-up gets her head shaved. So presumably, that would mean the last person thrown out of the Battle Royal, although they did not mention that. No, they just said the runner-up. Yeah, that could mean anything. That could mean the winner. Which they've said before, the runner-up is the one who's getting her head shaved. So I don't, maybe it is the winner. And if that's the case, the winner is just completely fucked. I mean, she, if she loses against her head shaved. Everybody should just jump out of the ring when Gail Kim's in there. Because <laughs> if, if it comes down to you versus immunity and the runner-up gets shaved, then whether you win or lose, you're getting shaved. Indeed. This is the stupidest company there's ever been. Can you, I, I don't think about this stuff before I do this show. I think about it as this is happening. They don't think about this in a course of weeks writing this show. No. Then we had the, uh, let's see. Christian and Rhino were cutting a promo. Uh, that's right. Team 3D walked up. I have no idea what happened, except LAX gave Christian a border toss into the wall. And that was like a sucked a giant cock. Yeah. That's what it said. Okay. Christian was cutting a promo. It was a very generic promo. He's great and they're going to win. Team 3D came up. Christian made some fat jokes. They went back and forth for a while. They got into a big giant fight. And they fought forever. And ever. And ever and ever. I'm getting choked up just thinking about it, how long this battle was. And somewhere in here, Don West mentioned, you know, these teams may not even fight on Sunday. <laughs> well, then what the fuck are we watching them fight for? Just because. No. Of course it's TNA. Of course the random draw will have them fighting. But that annoyed me so greatly. Just <laughs> why, why pluggy match and then tell fans, if you buy the show, perhaps you will see it. <laughs> There's a chance you'll get this. Because they are fucking retarded. They're dumb. You'll be fun. Did it, I ever watch TNA again? Yes, actually. That's the such that every time you keep shooting it down because you're an asshole. But I was going to say... Why do you blame me for them sucking? Because you made me watch it. Because we have to do this. No, we don't. Yes, I'm afraid we do. No. Okay? The least they could do is be good. This is not my fault they're bad. I've said this a million I, I times. Care. It's not my fault it's I do the same It's irrelevant to the quality of the show. Week. It's not my fault we do the same rant every week. I'm not the one writing this goddamn show. Well, what I was going to say was, let's start a wrestling promotion, and to book it, we will get some crackheads. And we'll see if they can book a better product than total nonstop action. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. All right. Um, now we have the immunity match. The match with the pole. Clippers on the pole. Battle Royal. Uh... Girls had to pretend that they couldn't get the Clippers when they clearly could. Christy went up there and had the opportunity to get it, but did her stupid splits guillotine leg drop instead, which is now the new Ric Flair coming off the top now that he's retired because she's never hit it. She never will. It's just retarded. And they did a five-girl stacked-up superplex, which was terrifying, a train wreck, which was terrifying. I thought for sure somebody was going to die, and then Gail finally got the Clippers and won. Yes, the, the Tower of Doom spot, the person on top of this, the one taking the biggest bump was... Chrissy Hemi! My God, are they trying to kill her? She's a model chick. She's not a wrestler. 
It did amuse me when the match started. The, the highlight of this whole thing to me was the match began, and of all these girls, all these women, all these all these wrestlers, Gail Kim and Jackie, the two most experienced wrestlers, just immediately found each other. So, I am working with you. You won't hurt me. Let's go. Who? Jackie and Gail Kim. Yes, they're they're much better off together. Joe and Nash did a promo. Uh, Joe said Angle and Steiner better bring baseball bats and pipes because they'd have to use it to kill him to take his belt. Nash was there in the back room with the belt on his shoulder, and after Joe left, Nash said it'd take more than strength to beat Joe. It would take brains. My favorite part I is... I like brains. <laughs> okay, zombie Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember that from the... Uh... <laughs> we were we were in Orlando. We were all in the car, and uh, there was a, a girl walking by with gigantic hooters, and you started salivating. That sounds like me. And then uh, Craig's like... I like a good ass instead. And then I said, I like brains. And, and you were both appalled. I think we called you gay. <laughs> yes. This is just ridiculous. Oh, there you go. I was the only pig in, not, I was only the no, only non-pig in the car and you fucking called me gay. You pigs, you perverts. The anyway. fourth person in the car agreed with us, by the way. Go on. But, uh, what the hell were we talking How about? How dare you? <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, Joe and Nash are cutting this promo and <clears throat> Joe's talking about how, okay, there's a tag team match coming up, and Kurt Angle and Scott Steiner, two scary wrestlers, are going to come and get him. And he wasn't worried. You know why he wasn't worried? Is it because he's the TNA champion? Is it because he's a badass and a submission machine? No! He's not worried because he's got Big Kev behind him. Because he's got a big seven-footer to do his fighting for him. Yeah. I love a champion there. Stand up on his own. So then we had the Sting and James Storm match. Crowd brawling. The best part of this match, it's a no DQ match, okay? They're brawling around ringside. Storm falls down by the steps, and there's a beer bottle there, okay? A glass beer bottle. I've never been in a bar fight or anything like that. Oh, come on now. If I found a glass beer bottle, I mean, I'd make the most of that, as did James Storm. Like Bass Rutten would. What did James Storm do with this glass beer bottle? Did he break it over Sting's head in this no DQ match? Did he break it on the stairs and use it as a dagger? No, he drank some and spit in his eyes. <laughs> no DQ! What the fuck? So, they did a bunch of, of stuff, and Jackie tossed a chair in. They uh, did a ref bump. They did a scorpion. They did a chair shot with a kick out. They did a wacky splash and a kick out. It was basically WrestleMania finishes on Impact. Here in the middle of this Impact show. Yeah, now, if this were the main event, fine. It wasn't. This was top of the hour. No, top of the hour. And a a, match a with... random match with two tag team partners. <laughs> with dirt nothing on the line. Just fucking a splash through a table was a kick out. And uh, finally, uh, or no, it wasn't a kick out. He just didn't pin him. But he finally hit a second death drop for the pin. And... Yeah, so well, he did a death drop, put him through a table, and then hit another death drop for the win. Yeah. I also like... It was a good match. Just why the top of the hour was it like this? I, I didn't. I don't know. But I love Sting, but he has the worst top rope splash of anyone <laughs> who's ever used this move with any regularity. And he he did it twice here. He missed it once and he hit it once. And both times he's awkward, flying through the air sideways, arms w- waving. That that amused me. And we had Kip James on a promo about how he was the man who made DX, not Triple H, not HBK or anybody else. This was so lame. And the, the gist of this was he spent his promo talking about guys on another show. Yeah, and even Chris looked at him like, seriously now. They're, they, or it was Borash, I think, looked at him like, they're so much cooler than you, Kip. Cornette with the second random drawing called out the rest of the egotistical eight. First name was Matt Morgan, so three guesses who his random fucking partner was. Yes, Kip James, who he's been feuding with. What a feud this has been, by the way. Oh, yeah. Let's recap. Matt, Matt Morgan, the babyface, jumps Kip for no reason in the hallway and kicks his ass. Kip comes back for revenge and fights in Cornette's office. Yeah. Now they're a tag team. Yeah. Did I miss anything? And they have to uh, have a match, which... Uh, oh, that was a poor idea. In which Mike Tanay said, and I quote, You almost would have expected this. You don't fucking say, Mike. <laughs> yes, we totally. almost would have accepted, expected this. <laughs> so, yes, they did, they did two drawings in this show. Both times, the guy who drew... The, the, the first man drew a name that was the man he was shooting with, and then they got into a fight. Yeah. Wow! Didn't Vince Russo once say he hates predictable television? Well, maybe he's, maybe he's tried to learn booking. What a dipshit. So they had this match, Morgan versus Kip, and I will say that it was better than I expected. It was still no good, 
but it was better than I expected. And and uh, Morgan won with a jumping kick clean, and that was that. And now they will team up on Sunday. Yes. And, and nothing can make you want to see two guys team up to watch them fight. Yeah. So, and the best part was there, there was another part of the show. I don't know who he was talking about, but one of the announcers was talking about maybe it was uh, it was uh, Sting and or it was James Storm and yeah, James Storm and Sting. Maybe it was that match, but one of the matches, the announcers were like, they only have to, they only have to, they only have to get along to for, win three matches. Yeah, for th- something like that. And I thought, no, because when they win, they're the champions. <laughs> they have to get along into perpetuity. They have to be along, get along forever. I hate this company. Well, it's awful. It's terrible. Then we had BG James being asked if he'd like to have his partner. He basically said, uh, "Awesome Kong." Yeah. Okay. So let's review. Okay. There are four potential. There are four potential uh, teammates here left. BG James, Awesome Kong, uh, Robert Roode, and Booker T. Booker T is going to be Robert Roode's tag team partner because they're feuding. We all know this. That means BG James. Via the random draw, we'll be teaming with Awesome Kong. So he came out for this promo and just conveniently plugged that, yes, I want to be Kong's tag team partner. So good news for him. How uh, tall are you? About 6'2". Oh, 6'2". For those of you that saw the battle, Vinny, if you, if you remember how tall Vinny was compared to me, that is almost the difference between Awesome Kong and BG James. Is he 6'4"? And he's the taller one. Yeah. She's about 5'9", and he's about 6'2", 6'3". Yeah. This is going to be absurd. <laughs> Just ridiculous. So, I can't wait till Sunday to see this company further fall apart. I, I, I will... We're going to end the show... Re, I can't say plugging. We're going to explain what's going to happen on the pay-per-view Sunday and how unbelievably awful it is. <laughs> it's terrible. Borash interviewed Steiner and Kurt... They don't like each other. They almost got in a brawl. And then Petey cut a promo and separated them. So they needed to be friends for ten minutes to beat Joe. Because, of course, early in the show, what did we have? We had them both saying, we'll team up tonight to beat Joe, and then we'll only have to worry about the two of us at the pay-per-view for the title. Even though that makes no sense, because I don't know how they're going to get the title. Since it's a fucking tag match here in the main event on Impact. So, with all that said... We had Nash and Joe versus Steiner and Angle, and what happened? Why they got the heat on Kevin Nash. They wouldn't let him tag in Joe. So, if I understand Please correctly, explain. they wanted to hurt Joe. They wanted to take out Joe so he cannot compete Sunday, and they're going to do this by beating up Kevin Nash, right? Yeah. Okay. And Nash tried to tag, and they were repeatedly stopping him. All right. They didn't want Joe in there where he could hurt him. <laughs> this was the dumbest show ever. They ended up uh, pitting Nash. Yes. Just, Joe eventually just got in. Yeah, he came, Joe came without a tag. He was so tired of not being hurt that he came in to get hurt and killed them. And eventually they dumped him out, and then Kev, or, or Kurt Angle grabbed Kevin Nash and hit the single worst Olympic slam there's ever been in the history of pro wrestling, in the history of the Olympics, in the history of slamming things. Nash didn't go up at all. No. Kurt had to totally, totally lift him. He he sort of got him up and then fell backwards. And then he put him in the straps, and then Scott Steiner pinned Kevin Nash. Yeah. I, I Again, I thought the plan was to hurt Joe. No. What did they accomplish by pinning Nash? I, I don't know. And the ref counted three, and Kurt Angle turned around and he was mad. And I thought, well, of course Kurt's mad. Their plan was to take out Joe. And they said, Kurt's mad because Scott stole the pin. <laughs> what? He was angry that the legal man pinned the legal man. What bullshit this is. Why, why would he care? Why would he be upset that Scott pinned the guy? I mean, he should be upset that Nash got pinned so they can't hurt Joe. But why would he care that his team won? This is a bad program. This was the dumbest show ever. There's no question. Every segment made no sense. <laughs> All right. So let's recap the show. Let's explain what's going to happen to this paper you were going to watch on Sunday. The main event is a three-way. Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle and Scott Steiner. There will likely be all sorts of goofiness involving... They're probably bringing PD with his no eye to do a run-in. And uh, Rocket Khan will also be there and... Most likely, Kevin Nash will turn on Joe at some point. There will be all sorts of run-ins, a ref bump. That will probably be okay, but I don't care. There will be this goofy-ass tag team tournament with... uh, Who's even in the Terror Dome? Is it the Cruiserweights? I would assume so. 
the, the only one I know, the only one I know, because they, they, they did a this weird video package at the end where they had they put all the matches and then one guy or one team got a promo. And the one guy from the Terra Dome match who got a promo was Saban. And he said he was going to win because he liked recess at school and he played on the monkey bars. I'm not making this up. <laughs> it's your plug, everybody. That's what, that is what you're going to see on Sunday is pro wrestlers playing on the monkey bars. I just want to know why a giant domed cage is needed for a cruiserweight title match. Did something happen? Did a man get counted out repeatedly? <laughs> no. Am I missing something here? Is you there are. a reason for this dome? Remember when Cornet had the plans and he said he was going to get revenge on all the wrestlers who had made him angry? Apparently he hates... Uh, apparently it's the X Division that's made him angry. <laughs> okay, go on. Okay. So the, there's... Okay, there's the Terra Dome match. Wherein there will be a ring with a cage, with a dome, with a tiny hole. An undetermined number of cruiserweights will be inside fighting to get out. And what does the winner get? Nothing. There's nothing on the line. It's well, a match. they may get the cruiserweight title. Presumably they'll, get a, well, presumably they'll get the cruiserweight title or a title shot. But boy, was that not made clear. All that was made clear was there was a cage. There may be a shark. <laughs> there is the... What the hell are they calling it? The the, the, the ladder match. The, the women's match is a name. I forget what it's called already. But there will be a women's battle royal, which then comes down to a ladder match. The winner of the ladder match gets a title shot. The loser of the title of the ladder match, even though she beat everyone else, gets her head shaved. Unless it is Gail Kim who won the immunity match, in which case a mystery woman will get her head shaved. <laughs> no one knows who. <laughs> then there is the tag team tournament. There are, <laughs> there are allegedly four random teams and four established teams. The four established teams include include as noted AJ Styles and Super Eric, who have teamed up once. And Christian Cage and Rhino, who when they qualified, it was noted, they don't team up that often. The other teams, I believe, are LAX and Team 3D. Then you have the unbelievable one in a million random draw teams where there's three guys who are feuding with their partners and then the redneck and the girl. Yeah. And undoubtedly, one of the teams that hate each other is going to end up tag team champions. And Mike and Don will pretend they never saw it coming. They'll say, how could this be? How will they get along? We've never seen anything like this before when, in fact, it's all the same bullshit. Yeah, and Monday morning will come, and there will be a champion. I don't care who, who will be. There will be a tag team champions who hate each other. Calling me women's champion. Some guy will crawl through the tiny hole in the X title, and no one will see any of this because someone's going to buy this show. Thumbs down. This show got a thumbs down. This show gets a fist down. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I just started the entire show over again. We recorded five minutes, and I just gave up and started over. None of you will ever know this. Brian, Brian made the worst attempt to explain his thoughts on the Sacrifice show. For five minutes, folks, for five minutes, he tried to explain how he felt about Sacrifice. He compared it at various points to math, physics, and the answer to the universe, he then gave up and began to play a song. It was the worst song we ever played, and Brian quit. I did. <laughs> I just, I stopped. You'll never hear it. You know, and it wasn't even any good. No, no. This, this was not like the lost Brian and Vinny show where we were talking about the, uh, the, the time machine. This was just utter shit. Yeah. You missed nothing good. No. We've spared you. So let's start over again. It's the right. Brian and Vinny Show. It's, it's Sunday, May 11th. That's right. It's Sunday, May 11th. It's Monday, May 12th. It's still 2008, no matter which day it is. That's right. We're going to recap the TNA Sacrifice pay-per-view, which I cannot logically attempt to explain, as I discovered in that five-minute rant that I just did. But you, you also already prepared a speech for the board. Are you going to repeat that? I did. Should I repeat the, my prepared repeat speech? Repeat your pre prepared speech. They missed it. I had a prepared speech that I wrote for the board that I wanted to start the show out with. I shouldn't have deleted that part. All right, hold on. And they make sure I got out my papers here to rustle. My prepared speech for the board by Brian Alvarez. Dear board, fuck you, I hate you. Was that better than the first time I did it? <laughs> Just as good. Okay, good. Yeah, so anyway, let's move on with this goddamn show now. The sacrifice pay-per-view. It sacrificed me. It was a it was a sacrifice 
to uh, to witness this program. It was bad. I was trying to explain the level of, of stupidity of this show, but I was unable to do so. I was just un- in fact, my explanation was actually how stupid this show was, and maybe- I should have just kept it. This show was stupid, but it wasn't as stupid as the recent television. The recent television has been dumber. The actual the actual setup for all of these matches was profoundly stupid. Yes. Once everything was all set up, it was just a bad show. It was almost like some of the stuff seemed to work in spite of itself. No. <laughs> like what? Name one thing. Like the crowd having sympathy heat for Roxy after she got her head shaved. Well, I think they, they wanted that to happen, believe uh, it or not. Well, that may have worked. I don't think they wanted the Fire Russo chance or the bullshit chance, but what can you do? Let's just talk about this show from the beginning, and we'll have some comments here and there. It was bad, don't get us wrong, but it was not the worst pay-per-view of all time. No. Especially the worst TNA show. It certainly was not the worst TNA show. Maybe the longest TNA show, TNA show of all time. You know, maybe it was because the TV was so bad that this could not possibly have been that bad. You know what that I mean? May be, that may be it, actually. This was stupid, but the, compared to the stupidity we have seen so much of the past four weeks, it was merely just mundanely stupid. It's, it was not stupid enough to really blow you away. It started off with blatant, outright false advertising. Moments after the pay-per-view started, meaning literally seconds after your your purchase was made and your twenty nine ninety five was in the coffers of of Comcast and TNA and, and wherever Other else. Other forces of evil. Angle cut a promo and said, I got hurt in Korea. Dr. Joe told me no wrestling. The peak of my career is ahead of me. I must I must take care of myself because if I get hurt again, it could be the end. I have three cracked vertebrae, two herniated discs, and I cannot afford to do this right now. Off the pay-per-view. The main, the third man in the main event, off the pay-per-view. Just like that. Well, what would you have had them do? Other than Pardon tell, us, me? <laughs> tell us two days ago? Yeah! <laughs> well, they could have done that. Tell us on the free pre-show. They could have done that. They could have done a hundred, they could have put it on the website, they could have done anything. They waited until they got our money, and then they told us. How funny is it, Vinny, that you've watched wrestling for so long that you didn't even think twice about this? I just don't this care anymore. This blatant false advertising. I consider watching TNA to be a ripoff, let alone paying for it. So, <laughs> Just bullshit. So, yeah, they fucked us out of, of one man in the main event. And so instead of Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, and Scott Steiner, we merely got Joe and Scott Steiner, as was billed here. And then Steiner showed up, and they told him about it, and he said he'd believe it when he saw it. Everything happens for a reason, he said. He was there with Rick Steiner and Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash also got out of the limo, which caused the interview girl to overact in a poor manner. My God, did she overact. Yeah. She said Kevin Nash's name repeatedly. Yes. Kevin Nash? Kevin Nash? Then it ended. Yeah. This is so awful. Then Joe arrived and said he didn't know about this either, but uh, shit happens, and he also didn't know about Nash showing up with Steiner, and this made him angry. Yeah. We're supposed to care. We're supposed to care. So, then we had the beginning of the tag team tournament. For those of you that have forgotten, there was a bullshit angle with the tag titles. Kaz and Eric Young won, but Super Eric interfered, and Super Eric refused to reveal he was Eric Young, and so the titles were held up. They had a, a tournament. There were established teams. There were eight established teams that had to fight to qualify for the tournament. And then eight singles guys who just got put in the tournament. So it was better to be a singles guy than one of the established teams. No, because the single guys were put into a random draw. Mm-hmm. And Utterly random, by the way. Utterly random. Left to the fates. As it turned out, in this utterly random drawing... Everybody got teamed with who they were feuding with, except B.G. James, who got who he wanted. Amazing. Funny how that works. James Storm and Sting, who are feuding, randomly got teamed together to face Team 3D in a tournament match here. It was a very below-average match. I give it a star and a half. Generous. They did a a bunch of stuff here. Sting and Storm couldn't get along. Storm was drinking on the apron. The finish saw Storm get drunk and start doing something, I don't know, sitting on the turnbuckle. This made the opponents so mad, that being Team 3D, that they turned their backs and allowed Sting to throw James Storm through a table. And then Devon pinned him. So, I guess 
I don't know what's going on here. We saw basically we saw a four minute handicap match with Sting against the Dudleys, where in the finish was a fourth man being pinned. On a very wacky finish with a table way too far away, and James Storm barely caught it, and it looked like it sucked. So James Storm and Sting both didn't give a shit about this tournament. Correct. <laughs> Why are they in it? Well, I'll, I don't know, Brian. All I know is, so far, we were one for one in Deuce's Wild Match, and the random team lost. So they're 0 for 1. Yeah. All right. Trigg did an interview. It took him approximately an hour to complete this interview. The girl asked him who was going to win. Or first, she wanted to know more about Angle's injury. He said he got dropped on his forehead. A recurring injury, Frank Trigg noted. He uh, said he had to pull out and did his main event prediction, which was Samoa Joe. And seriously, this took him about three minutes to spit out. He went forever and ever and ever. My favorite part was when... The blonde was the worst. Well, she did not help things. Partic- no. Particularly when, when Frank said, you know, Kurt Angle can't wrestle tonight. He's got thing about his career. And you, you just can't put your life at risk like that. And the blonde nodded knowingly. Yes. She she thought this was wise. And the other part where Trigg noted that Joe was a fat man and she cackled. She did. She got giggled at his jiggly man boobs, yes. Yeah. Hell of a champion. Robert Roode and Booker T against Rhino and Christian. Yes. Another random draw. Booker T and Robert Roode, who are feuding, randomly were teamed together. Coincidence. Also could not get along. The wrestling was uh, good whenever there was no storyline involved uh, regarding the partners not getting along. Rude wouldn't tag, uh, which, of course, made for a stupid match because Christian's being beaten on by Robert Rude in a tag match, and we're supposed to get behind Christian even though it is technically a one-on-one match Yeah. because Rude will not tag. Right. <laughs> Rude was beating on him alone, and Christian was helpless. Hell of a baby face right there. So, finally, Booker got the blind tag. Rhino got in. Bunch of stuff. Rhino ended up goring, I guess, rude for the uh, clean pin. And then uh, after the match, Booker raised the hands of Rhino and Christian, and they were all celebrating. And then he went outside and grabbed a chair and snuck into the ring and, and laid out both guys with chair shots, and that was the end of that. He's apparently apparently turned heel. I don't know who's a heel in baseball. At this point this. right now, I have no... Earthly idea who's a heel and babyface in this show. No. It's impossible to tell almost all the time. But apparently Booker T is. It seems likely. This seems like a heelish act against people the crowd generally generally likes, which often means he's a heel. Why would Booker T not get pinned if he's just going to immediately turn heel? Who the fuck knows? Because they don't know anything. Two stars I gave this. The, the, the As you noted, the in-ring stuff was fine as long as you turned your brain off. We had Steiner meeting with Nash in his locker room. Petey was there doing lap pull-downs, and Rocka Khan was there. And Steiner said, listen, everybody knows you're using Joe. And if you help me win tonight, I promise I'll give you the first title shot. And Nash said he'd think about it and gave a handshake. Nash looked 500 years old and was extremely red this evening. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Doesn't seem like a good thing to me. Red, like a tomato. Yeah. Also, I need to note that uh, Petey Williams, Maple Leaf Muscle... The, the bodybuilder gimmick was doing lap pull-downs with 30 pounds. 30 pounds. And what advice did Steiner give him? One more for bulk. Was... One more for bulk or something like that. One more for mass, something along those lines. Something absurd. So then we had Kip James and Matt Morgan, the next random team, who also happened to be feuding, what a shocker, against LAX. So uh, Morgan and Kip actually got along a little better than some of the other teams, but... Of course, the end saw Morgan accidentally kick Kip, and then Homicide pinned him. This match went like two minutes. It was pointless. I give it a half a star. Sure. Hector was out there with LAX. Kip was horrible. And that's... That's the end of the story. There was a great spot where Homicide hit a big dive, and they showed a replay. And, of course, they chose to show the replay right when he got out in the apron to do a second dive, which they ended up missing. Not the stupidest production gaffe on the show, but a pretty dumb one nonetheless. Pointless match. It, it was. It went two minutes, and at, at least we had a team that got along until the finish, so it meant something when they, got, they, did, when they collided. This was bad. Yeah. AJ interview about the match versus BG and Awesome Kong, which is coming up later. Then Kurt suddenly came up and wanted to know if AJ was seeing his wife. AJ said No. Angle said, listen, I'm the boss, and you didn't check on me when my neck was hurt. I I demand to know, are you seeing my wife? And AJ said, I'm not answering that right now. Take care of your neck. And he stormed off. So apparently, AJ apparently turned babyface 
the moment that Super Eric appeared in the locker room several weeks back to be his partner. <laughs> I believe you're correct. That's the babyface term. There was, there was, there was imp an implied build to a babyface term with the whole Karen deal, and then he just is a good guy now. Yeah. As far as we can tell. No one knows. Regardless, he wrestled next. Super Eric and AJ against Awesome Kong and BG James. Now, keep in mind that... that one of the main reasons, in fact, the main reason that the goddamn tag belts were put up in a tournament in the first place was because of Super Eric. Super Eric screwed AJ, basically. And they put this dipshit back in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Classic. They faced Awesome Kong and BG James. Th this was not as bad as I'd expected because Super Eric and AJ are, are not that big. It was a little bit uh, wacky to see Awesome Kong approximately one inch bigger than the diminutive AJ style. Well, the first thing they did was she locked up with AJ, who then powered her back to the corner. Yeah. Bad. What an encounter. <laughs> so, and was, then she, she was fought back, by the way. Did she, you know, hit a back fist of doom or a power bomb or lariat? No. She squeezed his nuts. Yeah. She was, she was not even China. She was just any other girl at yeah. this point. It's not completely absurd, but she was far from the monster she's she's been prior to this, and no one really cared all that much, really. Heat on AJ, and then uh, and then uh, BG ran wild, and and uh, they did some stuff. Actually, it was who who was it? it was Super Eric? They got the heat on AJ. Eric, Eric was doing his his Superman routine, and so he body slammed Awesome Kong onto BG James. Body slammed her. <laughs> Eric wiped her out with a dive. AJ, uh, the finish was him going for a dive, and he slipped and fell on his face. And then he just laid there like a dead man. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was a blown spot that he sold. Sure. Yeah. He just decided, well, I'll just pretend like I'm hurt. And then BG picked him up, and, and AJ Small packaged him for the pin. And uh, AJ was actually hilarious after he fucked up, but everyone gave him hell, chanting, you fucked up, that sort of thing. And... Luckily, this was the end of Awesome Kong in the tournament. We did not have to see her in there with any giants. But uh, what a waste of her first match with men this was. She was just there. She accomplished nothing. Two-star match. There's nothing memorable about and it. And her team lost. Uh, let's review. AJ Styles is not the tag team champion because Super Eric screwed him. Yes. So now they are partners, and they are best friends. Yeah. This makes no sense. However... I'm okay with it because they have great chemistry together because, as noted, they're the two biggest geeks in the company. Damn. I would actually be fine with them being a regular team now. Let Tomko be a cool badass off by himself, put AJ and Eric together and have them be the wacky geek tag team. In this company, they can be a, he a heel or a face. It don't matter. They'll just do their cool spots. They'll do some wacky comedy. Everyone will go home happy. Damn. I'd be fine with that idea. Lauren interviewed Rick Steiner, who said he was there to support his brother. He barked repeatedly and scared her. And I think this was the last we ever saw of him on the show. It was, yes. She she also <laughs> noted his arrival was a surprise, which indicates she does not watch the show. No, even I knew that. I knew that. Think about that. Then we had the Terror Dome. The Terror Dome, everybody. It was a domed cage. It was the monkey bars. There was a hole in the top that you had to get out. It was Curry Man, the Guru... Consequences Creed, Shark Boy, Jimmy Rave, Kaz, the Motor City Machine Guns, Johnny Devine, and Black Machismo. Before the match, Jim Cornette came out and said that since Kurt Angle was injured, the winner of this match tonight was not only getting a shot at the Cruiserweight title, but he was also taking Kurt Angle's place in the main event. So yes, the Guru, <laughs> Consequences Creed, Shark Boy, any of these men could be a main eventer. Could have been a main eventer tonight. Actually, Shark Boy versus Scott Steiner and Samoa Joe. I'd have paid to see that one. <laughs> Curry Man? Curry Man? That would have been too good. So, what to say about this match? Jimmy Rave. The fans love this match. They chanted, This is awesome. They chanted TNA. It was one of those matches where I just don't. Get what people want to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, here is a large part of the problem. We couldn't see it. That's also true. They, they, they but, but hold on a second. Okay. We could see it better than them. You would think so. The cage had these giant thick bars. Red. Thick red bars. I mean, like blood red. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and as noted, the ring has six sides. 
So unless you're looking almost directly perpendicular through the side of the cage, you can't see it. If there's any kind of angle, which you will note four of the six sides have, you can't see through the cage. So at any given point when they went wide, oh, 50% of the ring was completely obscured. The other 50% was only half obscured. It was impossible to tell what was going on. Then you added the fact there was ten dudes in this tiny little area all doing stuff, all small, many of whom looked the same, just dressed in black, and all you could see was humanoid bodies flying around and doing stuff. Maybe that's why they loved it so much, is they couldn't really see what was going on. They just saw bodies all over and falling off high places. It, it, it was like a, a real-life highlight reel. They invented a new move, which I have dubbed the Stacked Up Stupid Plex. It was a, the usual five or six or seven men, and the man at the very top did a hurricane rana off the top of the cage. It looked so bad. <laughs> D- dudes flying everywhere in a heap. There was there was nothing. I didn't think there was anything cool about it. It was just like everybody was on each other's shoulders and we all fall down. <laughs> it was ashes, ashes. We all fall down is what they did. Yes, and yes. I was happy no one died. There was that was the stupidest thing they did by far. There's a bunch of stuff here where I thought, oh god, they're going to do something stupid, and almost always it turned out to be something not nearly as stupid as I thought. I was certain someone was going to take a bump from the top of the cage to the ring mat, which never happened. Uh, Divine took a bump from the top of the cage onto a pile of about eight dudes. Yeah. So, and, uh, uh, Sanjay was, uh, Sanjay and, and, and I think it was Curry, man, but Sanjay and somebody fought up on the top rope for like eight minutes. They were just there. And finally it was their turn to do the spot, and whoever it was hoisted Sanjay up to it for a power bomb, and I gasped, and then he threw him down onto a giant pile of men. Stuff like that. It was just moves. It was just a bunch of moves. Some of these moves were so complex that I had no idea what was going on. It was like, who's supposed to be getting hurt here? One of those deals. And since nobody was selling, I didn't have an answer to my question. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, both guys would be down. This was a, a uh, I don't know, it was, it was a fucking mess. It was a complete mess to the point where we were talking about the visibility issues with the cage. The very first thing the announcer said was Mike Tanay pointing out that basically saying, we can't see very well, we're going to do our best to describe this action. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Divine was dropped from the top on all the guys. And then Kaz climbed the monkey bars and got out, and he won. So that's it, everybody. Yeah. Then Joe interviewed, uh, did an interview about Kaz replacing Angle. He said Kaz deserved the spot, but he was going to beat everybody. And then Borash asked him about Nash, and there was a complete flip out on the part of Samoa Joe. Yeah. He tried to strangle, kill, maim, and murder Jeremy Borash, all the while saying he didn't care. That's true. I just like that, again, the babyface champion is uh, whining and bitching and bullying this poor announcer guy who's just trying to do his job. Yeah. He's just the worst. Again, we he, I, I think he's a babyface, isn't he? Isn't he supposed to be the hero? I believe so. Isn't he supposed to be the guy we look up to and cheer for? He's a whiny bitch. He's a whiny pussy. Yeah. And who needs the help, by the way, of a seven-footer to get his work done? Then he threatened to kill Kevin just because Kevin showed up with Signer. Yeah. This... And you guys think sure. I'm a bad friend. That's a bad friend right there. I, 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 Didn't even that, ask him what was going on. No. Didn't say, hey, did your car break down and the Steiners happen to drive past you? No. Joe, of course, just assumed the worst. But he didn't care. This was absurd. He, he was. This is every whiny junior high girl drama ever. Yeah. By your champion. By your champion. Then we had Rhino and Christian versus Team 3D. Christian and Rhino were selling the chair shot from Booker, which was at least good. So, fans were bored. Match was boring. Christian got a hot tag. No one cared. Then they cut him off. Rhino tagged it again, and and, uh, there was a four-way. Johnny Devine ran out, gave his kendo stick to Bubba. Rhino gored him, but Devine took the ref, and then Bubba hit Rhino and Devon with the stick, I guess, and then Devon pinned him. And I gave it two and a half. Wow, really? It wasn't horrible, but it was nothing. It wasn't much. It, it, this was an they end. had some time. They had the wrestling lo- was not bad. It was a two time. and a half star match. They, they this was an impact match. Only we got to see what happens during the commercial break. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Two and a half star oh. impact top of the hour match. It was a wacky fin- wacky screw job finish. Yeah. That oh, was I- a great line where Don said Bubba was three hundred and seventy pounds. Keep in mind they had to be below three hundred. About uh, two weeks ago, or two well, months month ago, ago, and he looks exactly the same. He's put on. Well, it also implies he put on seventy-five pounds in a month. Yes, good for him. I forgot to mention this, by the way. We, we need to recap. Let's go through how those deuces wild the random tag teams did. Kip James and Matt Morgan, how'd they do? 
They got in a fight and lost. BG James and Awesome Kong. They lost. Booker T and Robert Roode. They got in a fight and lost. Sting and James Storm. They got in a fight and lost. So you're telling me then the four randomly put together teams all lost? Yes. What the fuck was the point of putting them in in the first place then? Maybe they'd win. Well, they didn't. <laughs> this tournament sucks. What was the point of putting them in there? What's what's the point of this tournament? What's the point of any of this? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Nash said he was going to go find Joe. He was looking 100 in red. AJ and Eric versus LAX. Yeah, she, you're glossing over something important here. Again, uh, Borash asked, you know, Nash cho- or Borash told Nash, Joe choked me. He said he'd choke you. Nash was like, well, why should I be afraid of him? He, he laughed at this concept of being afraid of Samoa Joe, the champion. Yeah. He's, Nash has nothing to fear from this fool. Well, he's Big Kev. I hate this company. I honestly hate them. AJ and Eric against LAX in the other. Remember how we used to love pay-per-views? No more. <laughs> This was a bad pay-per-view, everybody. Oh, my God, it was. Do not purchase it. Oh, yeah. Then we'll skip ahead to that point. No buys. AJ and Eric versus LAX in the other semi. Eric and AJ, as noted, friends, baby faces. And when, the, when LAX came out, <laughs> I don't know why this made me laugh. They came out, and, and the announcers are like, Hector sure is working for that LAX. That They're so close to winning the belts. And I thought, they won one match in two minutes that Hector was not involved in, and that's it. That's all he's How done How close for them. are they really to the belts? He helped them They've beat Matt Morgan and Kit James. They've had to win two more matches here tonight. Hards. Yeah. The, in fact, they won that match because the other team fucked up. Indeed. The partner kicked his friend, right. or his other partner, or whatever the fuck, and that's how they won. Right. That's the influence of Hector Guerrero. But yeah, Hector's really helping these fuckers tonight. He, they're they're real close to the belt. So, did some stuff, big dives. They actually got heat on Hernandez, believe it or not. Yes, AJ Styles and Eric Young working over Hernandez. <laughs> yes, he did his uh, electric chair onto AJ's nuts. He uh, got the hot tag. We know this is AJ. He immediately screamed, oh, my nuts. Yeah. Broke down into a four-way, and the finish saw AJ trying a small package, but Hector ran in and turned it over, and AJ was pinned. Now, first off, AJ's shoulders were up, okay? By a large degree. <laughs> In fact, they weren't even... His lower back, I'm not even sure, was on the ground. <laughs> he may have been standing. <laughs> he may have been erect. But, uh... I just want to throw that word in there. That sounds gay. So anyway, uh, yeah. The other question, and I've always, this, this is a question I've always had about this fake sport, and maybe I just have to accept that this sport's fake. You give a guy a small package. Somebody turns it over. Mm-hmm. You're trapped. You can't get out. You cannot release the man. No. <laughs> yeah. Well... If you think about it, your head's hooked and his head is hooked, and your leg's grapevine his leg. Yeah, but you're holding on to him. He's also holding on to you, though. Everywhere you've got him, he's got you in the exact same point. I'm not saying you couldn't escape. <laughs> I am pointing out that, that, that everywhere, like I say... This is like turning over the figure four. Why would you not just release the whole... Well, that, that I don't know. <laughs> But at least in the fake world of wrestling, if you accept that a small package is a tight hole that someone cannot escape out of... It is. It, it's an it's an amateur hole. You could actually pin somebody with a small package in an amateur event. Okay. When you turn a small package over, the other guy now has the exact same hold on you in the exact same place with the exact same leverage. No. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Well, I'm sorry it doesn't work for you, Brian, because it's true. I'm going to small package you and, and have somebody turn it over. And I guarantee it's it's useless. It's just gonna work, Brian. It can't. When you ha- when you put a small package on someone, you hook their, your left arm over their head, right? Let's look at it this way. Yeah. Hold on a second. Look at it this way uh-huh. as well. Let's say I punched you in the face. Hey. Okay? okay. Yeah. And you're cold cocked and on the ground. I get on top of you. Somebody turns the pile over. Okay. A small... I still have the advantage. Okay. <laughs> yes. Even if you're on top. Okay. All right, if AJ Styles, or if whoever had the pin, AJ Styles is in position to take this man over in a small package, he's got the advantage. Right. I don't believe that turning it over suddenly transfers the the uh, the mojo into the other man. Okay. When you put a small package on somebody, they're not knocked out. It uh, unless you're doing something wacky, but 
More often than not, they're doing fine. They're they're physically fit. They're they're not worn down. They're not ready to be pinned at all. But you've surprised them, and using leverage and technique, you can hold their shoulders to the mat for a count of three. Now, if someone turns it over, now they have leverage and technique on you. So just let go. But they've got you, Brian. You're missing the point. They have your arm hooked, or excuse me, your head hooked, and both legs hooked, just like you had theirs a second ago. Okay, you just keep rolling. You could try. <laughs> you can if you can pull that off, then great. This is just stupid. The point is, his shoulders weren't down. That is true. Now, we've often criticized referees for just just count the pin, and the referee did here, so good for him. We're yelling at AJ. Get your goddamn shoulders down. Just lie flat. Fuck. Just lie flat. But he couldn't. He was ho- he was hooked by the other man, Vince. Don't make me start the show over again. Why not? No, Lauren I know why. Joe's kin. Kin! That's what they said. They said Joe had brought a bunch of Samoans. They were in their garb, by the way, so presumably they walked down the street like this. And one of the nameless Samoans cut the best promo on the show. Yeah, without question. I don't know what he said. Most of it was in Samoan, but he was very happy. He uh, was going to see Samoa Joe win. I believe at one point he said, Steiner who? And it was good. The chicks had their thing. At least this made sense. As stupid as the whole thing was, it made sense. No, I mean, the whole the whole idea of this match is stupid. You have a battle royal, and the last two in have a ladder match, and the loser, meaning the person in second place, gets shaved. Okay. That right there is just stupid. Here is the, the absolute peak of stupidity, maybe in the history of the world. The first entrance to, come, to walk down the aisle just to make their entrance for the match were Team Prawn. And they get in the ring, and Don West notes, these two are going to have to work together to be successful here. <laughs> and I thought, Don, you fuck with. If they work together, then they are both in the ladder match, and then one of them is guaranteed to be shaved. That's a bad idea. I can't blame Don. I can. Maybe he just didn't get it. <laughs> When you put it that way, I suppose it's possible. He may have just been confused like the rest of us. Yes. So, with those stupid rules out of the way, what they did made sense. It came down to the Voodoo Queen and Gail Kim. You know, I swear to God, not two minutes later, Salinas was the first elimination, and Thomas says, well, she's out, but I think she'll be happy about it in a minute. (laughs) Just pointing out this is a match where you don't want to win. I thought the best part was when she got thrown out, and, and Tanae was not sure if she actually was eliminated. Now, there's also that, too. They just saw it on the floor, and they're like, is she out? I don't know. I'm they confused. Had, they had no idea how you were eliminated, if you had to go over the top or the middle or whatever. But anyway, so it came down to Gail and the Voodoo Queen. And if you'll recall, Gail won immunity, meaning if she loses, she doesn't get shaved. The runner-up gets shaved, which apparently was Angelina Love. So... Gail had nothing to lose here. Right. Keep that in mind. So her and the Voodoo Queen have a match. And, of course, because Gail has immunity and because Angelina is the runner-up, Angelina, it is in her best interest to screw Roxy. It took us a long time to figure that out, but that is right. Everybody got that? Yes. So Roxy was going to win... But Angelina tipped the ladder over, and then Gail climbed up and won. Are we all square on this? That means that Gail is the winner, and Voodoo Queen must be shaved. Yes. Immediately after this happens, Gail goes after Angelina and starts beating her up. She's mad that Angelina screwed Roxy and caused her to have to get her head shaved. Correct. So earlier when I said this all made sense, I was wrong. (laughs) This part here was backwards. If Gail was so angry that her friend Roxy had to be shaved, why didn't she let Roxy win and then Angelina would be saved? Shaved. Shaved. God damn it, I hate this company. Go ahead, anyway. So they shaved Roxy. They gave Roxy a good shaving, eventually. People chanted... Fire Russo, people chanted, this sucks, or no, bullshit. That may have been me chanting, this sucks. And uh, that was that. They g- gathered all the heroic knockouts like Salinas and o- ODB showing her sensitive side, and they all gathered around to watch, holding hands with tears in their eyes, and all I could think was, she's not dying. 
He was getting a haircut. It will grow back. In fact, the worst thing by far was when Gail threw the ladder at her and she was bleeding. Bleeding bad. And we saw the we saw how clearly it was because it was right on top of her scalp. So that was that was far worse than the haircut. And and they shaved her and uh, <laughs> everyone got over it. And then they raised their hands and the fans all chanted Roxy, Roxy. So now she is their hero. Now they want to see her get revenge on Team Prawn. So. Almost by accident, this may have led to something good. She's bald. It'll grow back. <laughs> you know how fucking long it takes to grow hair? A while. <laughs> a year to get it the length mine is right now. Yeah. Actually, I've cut mine a few times, but eight months before sh- it's shoulder length. Then we had Gail, oh, I'm sorry, Nash searching for Joe, and they got into a big argument. This made me hate them both. Yeah, Joe said, uh, I will break you, Nash. And Nash said, listen, I was just there picking Steiner's brain, trying to get his strategy in this match. What strategy would that be? I'm going to do a bunch of suplexes? What the fuck strategy could they possibly have discussed in ca- in Scott Steiner's car? Idea. So Nash then uh, told him, listen, I'm going to sit back here tonight. You give me the signal later if you need me. And Maybe I'll be there, maybe I won't. And Joe said, I'm not giving you a signal, and if you come out there, I am going to presume you're my enemy, and I'm going to beat your ass. They have already broken up. They were best fucking friends on Impact. Yeah, a week ago. They've Three already days ago. broken up. Team 3D versus LAX in the tag team finals. This is a pretty good match. Yeah, this was the best match on the show. Brawl Forever. I actually thought the main event was the best that match on the show. Too, yeah. Brawl Forever for the bell rang. Heat on Homicide. Um, made his own little uh, comeback here. Actually, no, I'm sorry, uh, Hernandez, who they're building a building as Super Max, made his big comeback. When I first heard Super Max, I was like, what did they just say? And then, of course, they said it a hundred times in the span of 60 seconds, and I was ready to kill somebody. Did his big dive to the outside. Johnny Devine came out, so Hector Guerrero beat him up. He uh, beat the shit out of him, which which actually got a pretty big pop since there wasn't a lot of heat for much of this match, since it was the third time we'd seen all these guys. But uh, he beat him up. He put him on the table. He went up to the top rope. He did what they called a drop kick. To a prone man. <laughs> it's actually a double foot stomp where he landed on his ass. And I thought, why didn't you just do a splash? I don't know. Why? What the fuck were you thinking, Hector? <laughs> he landed on his ass in the cement. And I thought, Jesus Christ. Yes, just do his frog splash. Did get a huge pop. They did a double neck breaker on Homicide, and this was the best part. This was the best part of the whole night. This encapsulates TNA like nothing else. They're doing all their near falls, and they hit the double neck breaker on Homicide, went for the cover, and the ref says, no, 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 he's not the legal man. Keep in mind, we've had tables in the ring, We've had people interfere in matches right in front of the referee tonight. We've had everything you can imagine. And right here, the ref decides now. In fact, in fact, as this was happening, all four men were in the ring at the same time. Mm-hmm. And but, here, here's the worst part of it. Hold on. But the referee said, homicide's not the legal man. This don't count. Nobody in the audience had any fucking idea what was going on. No. Nobody in that audience knows anything about rules. No. So. Uh, no. Neither, by the way, do Mike Tanay and Don West. They were perplexed. They were also perplexed. So the ref says, no, no, no. Homicide's not the legal man. So three guesses. What happened one minute later? Are you going to predict that Homicide was involved in the pin of the finish. Homicide did, in fact, pin Devon one minute later. Well, Brian, at some point, there must have been a tag then. No. Really? There was no tag. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It sure doesn't. Oh. This company sucks a dick. We've talked about how everybody in this company has their own rules. LX's rules are apparently... <laughs> the, the illegal only man... Only the legal man can be pinned. But either guy can make the pin. But either man yes. can make the pin. Uh-huh. Now you know, everybody. Now you know the yes. special LAX rules. The, the reason I like this best in the show was that this is the only time really in the entire show, and it didn't pick up until after the end when Hector did his whatever he did to the table, but this is the only time in the show where you had heroes and you had villains, and the crowd cheered for this side over here, and they booed for this side over here, and they were into it. Every other time you had matches where guys, like when LAX fought Eric Young and AJ, 
The crowd had no idea who to cheer for. And the wrestlers involved did nothing to indicate this is cheer for one team over the other. Well, theoretically, that was two babyface teams. Okay. <laughs> That's sure. But it was everything else that it was it was just a mess throughout the night, except for this one night. There was clear cheer for these men, boo these men, and the crowd said okay, and they followed through. That, Otherwise, they cheered for moves. That leads us to Joe and Steiner and Kaz for the title. All three were booed. They introduced all three men, and they were booed. Right. Why? Well, Steiner apparently is a heel. Kaz is a geek that is replacing Kurt Angle, and Joe is a whiny bitch. That is what I've determined. That's pretty close. You can list more flaws in Joe, but that sums them up pretty well. Frank Trigg was there to do commentary, which led to the greatest moment on the show, TNA-wise. At the beginning of the show, it was just, at the beginning of the match, it was all action. Everybody's doing spots, they're running wild. And what do they do in the middle of this action? I believe they cut to a shot of Frank Trick at the commentary desk. For approximately ten full seconds. They cut to him, he began to speak, he made some point about neck injuries or favorites or strategies or whatnot. And as he's speaking, he's making little hand motions, the camera slowly zooms in on him. We're supposed to focus on him. Meanwhile, all we hear is men falling down and skin on skin and people cheering, and there's probably some really cool stuff going on. We never saw it. No. It's lost in the, into uh, in the ether. The ether, yes. So later on, we got some chance for Joe as he was beating both men. Then later, we got some chance for Scott as he was beating both men. <laughs> and then near the finish, we actually got some Frankie chance for Young Kazarian. But basically, it was three guys. Nobody knows who they're supposed to cheer for. They got booed here. They got cheered here. Well, the, the biggest moment of cheering was Scott, I think, had the biggest support group. And I think that's because, for various reasons, but mostly because there was a point here for where about three or four minutes where he just got the heat on both guys. Yes. He was just beating up Kaz and beating up Joe and beating up Kaz. And I thought, Suplexing them all over the place. Throwing them all over the place, doing cool moves, posing. And I thought, he's kicking both men's asses right now. And if that fucker Kaz wasn't in the ring, he would be the champion for sure. No wonder he's getting cheered. Yeah. So they did a bunch of stuff, and it was a, a fun match. It was, it was actually very, very fast-paced. And Scott Steiner is a extraordinarily large man. And for those of you that have watched a lot of fighting, big jacked up dudes don't have much cardio. <laughs> That's true. For those of you that have watched a lot of fighting, 40 something, 45 year old men, not a lot of cardio. You've got a big jacked up 45 year old man here. I thought this guy was going to have a heart attack. He went and went and went. And by the end of this match, he was so completely exhausted. I have no idea how his body was functioning. Joe ran wild there at the finish. Did a bunch of spots. Uh, we had uh, Kaz and Joe both making a comeback on Steiner. Rocka took the ref. Joe did a big dive, but Scott hit him with a pipe. And he ended up hitting a Frank Steiner on Kaz, which was mostly just him jumping in the air and falling on his stomach off the top rope. And Kaz did a flip. Joe made the save, probably a little bit too late, but they kept going. And finally, it was Scott... And Kaz battling on the top rope. Scott tossed Kaz to the outside, and then Joe grabbed Scott and hit him with a muscle buster for the pin. And uh, Joe retains the title. I thought it was a good match, probably the best match on the show. If you're a big fan of Spot Fest, you would probably say the cage match. And if you just want to see baby face and heels, I guess you would say the uh, tag team match. But this was good stuff, probably three and a half stars. And uh, there's your main event, kids. TNA. It was an above-average impact main event, I guess. It was well, the than last that. two matches were were fine. Yeah, they weren't good. If you if you compare this to a normal pay per view, well, I can't say they weren't good. They were good. They were and not if, as good as Joe and Angle. No, if you if you compare it to something like that, this was very very disappointing. But the the tag tournament finals and the three way at the end, that eh, was good stuff. The rest of the show, a lot of bullshit. And the TV leading up to this, just the most horrendous programming I've ever seen in my life. So, as mentioned, I've seen worse shows. I do not recommend this. In fact, I demand you do not buy this show. Uh, I would predict a buy rate in the 15,000 range, coming off a .9 rating. This company doesn't know what they're doing, which should surprise nobody. Uh, we've said it before. Find out what's right and throw it out is the <laughs> what, theme what of they TNA. Have done. And find out what doesn't work and do it. This is how TNA operates. So, anyway, thumbs in the middle, a little bit down. The last two matches saved this from being wretched, but uh, I cannot 
I will say thumbs down, but it is not in the not near the worst show I ever saw. I can't say thumbs down, dude. Just because last two matches? Not the last two matches, and the rest of the stuff was it wasn't that bad. It was bad, but I mean it was just a bunch of two star matches. I just thought it was really really boring for most of it. It was boring. It was boring. That's bad. Well, no, it can be boring stuff that wasn't bad. I mean, give me, I'll give you an example. The uh, Eric and AJ versus LAX. That was boring for a while there. Yeah, that was really up, boring. It ended up being all right. It actually would have been better if it had been worse, because then it would have been funny. There was nothing funny on this show. Oh, TNA. One good thing about Fridays, or doing the show on Thursday night, is Impact is fresh in my head. <laughs> I guess that's good. I don't have to wait a day. I can, I can, I can hate it immediately. Get it out of my system. Show opened with a title, as all episodes of Impact do. The title this week. I'm not making this up. What's up with Booker? <laughs> yeah. This is a first draft that they just went with. Yeah. Joe came out with his title. A bunch of wrestlers were gathered around ringside to hear what he had to say. Just random geeks. Said he was going to offer all of them the chance of a lifetime, a Slammiversary, King of the Mountain match. He said there were slots for five men to fight for the title. He said five, did he not, Vince? The first thing he said was five men. Okay. So then he said he asked Cornette if, as the champion, he could pick the eight. Eight slots. Yeah. So he said that Cornette said fine. Cornette would pick the first four, and then he could pick the second four. So now nine men. Correct, because you presume Joe as a champion would be in there somewhere. So, there are five, eight, or nine men in this match. We don't know. We don't care. Cornette had chosen Robert Roode, James Storm, Tomko, and Matt Morgan because none of these men had ever gotten a shot at the world title. And what a shot they're getting here, by the way. Oh, yeah. A, a one in eight shot of winning a wacky reverse ladder match to win the belt. Woo! And Joe said he wanted four tough-ass mothers. He was going to watch the show today, poor bastard. And next week he would tell us who these four men were. So let me repeat that. He said he was going to watch the show tonight, see everybody did, and then next week he was going to announce his four guys. So then Booker T came out and wanted to know why he had not been chosen yet. Booker T's gimmick, I repeat, is a man who does not give a shit about TNA, clearly does not watch the show, no. doesn't have any idea what's going on. No, he, he, he was angry about not being picked, even though Joe said these four names I read were picked by Jim Cornette. And that I will pick four more next week. Yes. Yeah. So, that's fine. Plays into the gimmick. So, they got an argument. Booker punched him. And then Christian and Rhino made the save. Right. Three Booker. three baby faces ran off the heel. Right. Well, no, really, because Booker T fought Joe. Joe turtled, and I, I think I heard him weeping and squealing. And then Christian and Rhino hit the ring to make the save by themselves. Yeah. Joe was just there. Yeah. He's the most impotent, neutered champion since Ray. Since CM Punk. CM Punk. Yeah, me, me, Joe wins his matches, but in all his angles, he comes off like a douche. Yes. So, yes, and, and yes. Booker retreated to the top of the ramp where he pointed out, you pussies, there's three of you and one of me. Yeah. I'm going to get some backup. We'll the fight heel, later. The heel said this. Yes. The heel noted that this was not fair. No. And, and it was, was correct. And the fans all said, you're right. And for some reason in this mess, they all chanted TNA. Normally when the heel, when the heel says something like, this is not fair, He's lying. He's lying. Yeah. It actually is fair. If, if for example, it were three on three and he said, this isn't fair, right. that's a heel. If Booker came to the ring with 3D to get Joe, and before they get there, Christian Rhino came out to even the odds, and Booker would say, hey, that's not fair, that's a heel. Sure. This, Booker, was, this the, was just like, hey, there's three of you and one yes. of me, this ain't fair. Booker getting beat up by three guys and then pointing out it took three guys to beat him, not a heel. No. This show sucks. They're idiots. To the back. Frank Trigg was meeting with Kurt Angle. Borash walked up and wanted to know how the neck was. Angle was, as he was explaining it, Borash just interrupted to ask about the Angle Alliance. And Wait. <laughs> the guy's actually hurt. Yeah. His, his career-threatening injury is back. Yeah. They're playing it for comedy. Yeah. P.D. Williams almost loses an eye and has not been mentioned once on TV. No. They don't care. So, Angle's then said he had an announcement for later. He said he got hurt in Korea... 
He said it was clear Joe was not going to pick him for the King of the Mountain match. Therefore, he was going to go out tonight and invite Karen and the kids to come back home. He was acting like he could not possibly have cared less about now being out of the world title picture. No. <laughs> Things happen. Easy come, easy go. Easy go. Who cares? And and Borash tried to ask him about AG and Tomko and what they were going through. And I, uh, No one can possibly care about that group anymore. No. There's not one single fan anywhere in the country who cares about the relationship of, of Tomko, Kurt Angle, and AJ Styles. Derek Blonde interviewed Kaz about winning the uh, X title shot on Sunday. And he basically said he would handle that later. But first things first, he had a six-man with Sanjay and Lethal. But Lethal wasn't paying attention. He said he had big things on his mind right now. Wow. This was horrible. The Blonde was horrible. Kaz was horrible. And th- th- this crew on TV, you had Jay Lethal being black machismo. You had Sanjay Dutt being the guru with his tambourine. And you had Kaz there in his this horrible ring jacket. Just looking like the biggest clown troop you ever saw. And then Kaz did his very wooden promo about what an honor it was to fight for the championship. Too bad you lost. And then, yes, then they talked about Jay being distracted, and Jay said he had big things in his mind. Keep in mind, this is the first time Jay Lethal has ever mentioned the big things in his mind. Yeah. Lethal and Dutt and Kaz against Rock and Rave and Johnny Devine. It was actually a really fun match while it lasted. Heat on Lethal. Uh, there was an awesome SOS slam by, uh, Hoyt where Lethal did like a full spin in the air and Guru made the hot tag and then also out of nowhere Kaz just pinned Hoyt with a one-legged drop kick. <laughs> totally out of nowhere. Done. Yeah. Take it home. Okay. So. It was fun while it lasted. Lethal grabbed the mic and, and called Val into the ring, got the ring out of his fanny pack and got it on his knee and said, will you marry me? They completely ripped yes. off Randy Savage and Liz. For those of you who are under the age of 15, this is exactly the delivery. This is perfect. Yes. Right? When Randy Savage proposed to Liz in the middle of the ring. Yes. For everybody else, what the fuck's going on? But that's fine. So, anyway, apparently they're getting married at Slammiversary, and Sanjay is pissed. Yes, yeah, Sanjay was in the back seething. And uh, to their credit, the announcers never mentioned this. It was perfectly clear Sanjay was pissed. We didn't need Mike Tenney and Don West to say, look at, Dutt, look at Sanjay Dutt. He's angry. They just let it be. So that's good. We got mysterious footage of Abyss. They had put up some curtains and acted like he was in a padded room or something. It looks so low rent. I mean, this is a fucking nationally televised program on Spike TV, and they spent a three bucks on this set at <laughs> Linens and Things. So bad. I think the straight jacket we used in Household which really became Vinny V may have been better. It may actually have been. He said he committed himself because he was an addict and a masochist. No matter how much blood or torture, it was never enough. Said doctors told him he could go home soon, and then they immediately cut away. Like, okay. immediately. Yeah. And never talked about it again, by the way. No. Okay, so first thing he says is there's a video. It's a shot of Abyss sitting against the padded wall, and he's in a straight jacket, and you can't see his face. It's obscured in shadow, but he's growling his promo, and he says they let him cut a promo for good behavior. And the next thing he says is, I think I fooled them. So hopefully his doctors don't watch this promo, or they'll know he's worked them. Next thing you know, there's all kinds of video effects and, and trick camera shots and whatnot. So apparently they gave a best not only a video camera, but editing equipment. They gave him his own truck to play with while he's in this, in this asylum. And that's what he did. The blonde interviewed Nash and Joe. They're friends again, everybody. They were friends on TV last week. They wanted to kill each other at the pay-per-view, and now they're friends again. It was just a misunderstanding. Who could care? Just a misunderstanding, everybody. Just Fat Joe and old Kevin. And so Nash is talking about how he thinks that wrestling is 90% mental and 10% physical. That's for goddamn sure. I that 10% maybe pretty, may pretty high. And Joe felt you're giving yourself too much credit. 90% physical and 10% mental, and they're friends now. And all of a sudden, Joe just started talking about Booker. I don't know. Don't know. Don't care. This show is so poorly written. Yeah, it's just like, i got to ask, uh, tomorrow on, on Figure Four Daily, Alex Greenfield is going to be on the show. Who's he? Writer for WWE till about a year ago. Works in Hollywood. I'm going to ask him if if you'd ever see a show this poor get greenlit. It just would never happen. It would never happen. I hope he watches Impact so he knows what you're talking about. Oh, he will. And we had uh, Awesome Kong against Gail Kim for the women's title. So for the second month in a row, they've put the fight for the title shot on the pay-per-view, and the title shot itself is given away for free on Impact. Yeah. And, and just and 
disappears. For a one, I'm sure. So, there you go. They uh, And by the way, it was 39 minutes into the show. Not even the top of the hour. Not the end of the show. Nothing like that. Just a match, you know. Just a match. So, it was a great match while it lasted. Gail went crazy at the bell. He did a bunch of stuff. All the girls came out to watch. Uh, Gail made a big comeback and tons of near falls and the place was going crazy and it was all great and exciting and everything like that. And and then uh, Raisha tried to interfere and ODB pulled her off the apron. All the girls got into Battle Royal. Raisha was, or the ref was distracted. Angelina tossed Gail off the top. Gail sold it like she'd blown out her knee. And then Kong killed her with an awesome bomb for the pin. So, uh, great TV match. Uh, they showed the power bomb about ten times from ten different angles. and They uh, all look lethal. Gail sold her knee all the way to the backstage area. They sent out geeks to uh, take care of her. and This was great. This was a great TNA segment, the best segment on the show. Hell and yeah. why they did not end the show with this, I have no idea, because it was all downhill from here. Yeah, um, this was a really good match. They did not go to commercial in the middle of it. They just let it go. The heat was insane, and it wasn't the usual TNA uh, fan heat of, hey, this is the part where we chant TNA or chant this is awesome or, or chant things. It was actual emotion, actual passion from enjoyment and, and pleasure of what they were watching, and so that's good. There was a point early on where Gail went for a run and botched it, which is, you know, whatever, big deal. But this show was taped at least two days ago or maybe more than a week ago, and they didn't take the time to edit that out. Of course not. <laughs> they just don't care. No. Maybe, the, maybe the, they don't even know. Maybe they thought, they thought that was what it was supposed to look like. I cannot complain, though. i got to give a thumbs up to this segment. It was great. That's true. So there you go. Your phone's making noises. It is. Then we had a video package of the Kurt Karen soap opera. The good news is that the they're playing these video packages. We're actually getting recaps and shit. Bad news is the Kurt Karen angle's been going on for, what now, a year, six months? All, all I know is when the thing started... I screamed because I did not wa- want to watch. I don't want to watch Kurt and Karen Angle ever again, let alone a recap of their best moments. But we got to give them credit for doing a recap. Yes, it is. It's true. They, they aired one here. They aired one for Gale and Kong. They aired one for Abyss. Bad so, news is this recap was about ten seconds long. Well, can't win them all. Then we had something. I don't even know what happened here. I don't know if it's my fault. It was not my it fault. It was not your fault. I don't know if it was the 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 cable company's fault or if this happened all over the country. But Kurt Angle came out, he had balloons, and he had a, an apology letter that he wanted to read for Karen, and uh, it was fucking awesome. Now, you have to you have to accept that Kurt Angle is a fucking idiot. He's, his character is just a total geek. He's no longer a badass. He's a comedy figure. In fact, admittedly, he is now a mid-carder, because Joe's not going to choose him for the title match. If you expect, if you accept that he's a comedy geek mid Carter, this was fantastic comedy. Mm-hmm. If you want him to draw you any money, this was an utter failure. But that's TNA for you. He basically uh, said he did not kick Karen out. She left him. He said he knew she was at her mom's house and he knew how miserable her life must be without him. Said he was going to give her the opportunity to come back to him where he belonged. Said he had neglected her in the past, but it was all about her getting her priorities straight. He said it was TNA title first, gold medal second, the kids third, and her fourth. And uh, she needed to uh, understand that, and then everything would be all right. He said he was wearing his best suit, and he'd gotten some stupid balloons. I even bought these stupid balloons, he said. It wasn't a romantic type. That was for wussies. He said he took the time to write this speech, and now the ball was in her court to make up for her mistakes, or, as a nicer way to put it, her failures as a wife. Yes. He said it took a real man of his stature to do this. He hoped she appreciated it. All he was asking was that she show up next week, and literally, as he said, next week, we were in the middle of a commercial. A Jack in the Box commercial. I have no idea what happened. Apparently next week, Kurt and Karen are going to have a barbecue Jack. I, I hope that this <laughs> I hope this was a to-the-back TNA moment, and they're just fucking retarded, or or uh, Comcast screwed up. Somebody screwed up, and it was not my fault this time. <laughs> no, we actually thought maybe the channel changed during the recording or something. No, they, they came back. When the commercials ended, it was impact again, and they made no mention of what Kurt Angle said. Yeah, no buys. So, then we had, uh, ba, ba, ba. LAX and Hector. LAX and Hector having their big celebration. It was fine. There were a lot of, of boobies bouncing all over the place. Yes, uh, Hector chastised Borash for staring at Selena's breasts. And Selena was appalled and covered up the cubic yard of flesh, which she exposes on every appearance. Yes. <laughs> it apparently occurred to her someone may be ogling her. Yeah, she's just too modest. She's a prude. So, 
That was exciting. We had LAX versus the Machine Guns for the tag team titles. It was a good match, fun match. Guns got the heat. Hernandez made the hot tag. Tanae said that Don Wetz had been calling Hernandez Super Max for years. Years, he said. This may have been my fault. <laughs> I just noticed this Sunday. Is it just me? It's years, he said. It's much closer to Sunday than it is years. It's been a month or two. Broke down into a four-way homicide, hit the ace crusher off Hernandez's shoulders for the pin. Thumbs up segment. Yeah, everything about this was, was great. Uh, this is the, the program. That if it was up to me, these guys would be feuding for the tag team titles, as it is. One's the champion, one is jobbers. But they, they, did not, they did not bury them here. It was a very competitive match. They got to do all their stuff. They got to look awesome. And then they got beat by the tag team champions with a finisher. Fine. This was thumbs up. Are we done? No, go ahead. Oh, all right. Usually you keep going. There was an interview, a promo with Booker T and uh, Team 3D. Booker said that Christian Cage and Rhino disrespected him, and I have no idea what they did to disrespect him or when it would have been. Apparently it's sometime between when Booker was announced as Robert Roos' partner and when Christian and Rhino beat him. Perhaps that was a sign of disrespect was to wrestle him. He disrespected them by beating them up after the match. No, he, he said they disrespected him. Oh. I don't know when this happened. I don't either now that I think about it. And then Devon talked for a while. Bubble was silent this time when Devon, Devon got to speak. He did fine. He said he was doing uh, he was doing Cage and Joe and Rhino a favor because he got them a match with Booker T, and now they'd be having a match with royalty because nothing matters more in TNA than what you've done somewhere else. Yeah. JB, uh, then we had Eric Young in Memphis looking for Elvis. This sucked. He was in the woods. He got a ride from a man in a Dr. Wagner mask, I believe. It took him four days to get to Memphis. It was horrible. No buys. Literally no buys. Today did a pre-tape promo sting, and as always, he said, this will be a side of the icon we've never seen before. It was an interview about his career. <laughs> okay. This may have actually literally been a repeat. I swear to God, when Sting joined TNA the first time, they did an interview just like this. Well, Sting, without his makeup, in street clothes, with sunglasses, talking about life, recapping his career. And the, the two key things he is here, he said, were the only promoter who would give him a chance was Jerry Jarrett. Yeah. And he had a tag team partner who was the ultimate warrior. And they had a breakup, and it was not a, it was not a friendly breakup. And then it, that was the end. This was actually great for the one minute that it occurred. The best part was when he noted <laughs> it was Rock. That was Warrior's name. Yes. He claimed he was the first Rock, which, of course, is incorrect. But uh, it was Rock and then uh, Flash Borden. I had heard Flash. I knew it was the Blade Runners Rock and Flash. I did not know it was Flash Borden. I never laughed so hard as I did when I heard Flash Borden. We need a new Flash Borden. His son, Singh's son, needs to come back as Flash, Flash Borden. Flash Borden. And the blonde interviewed Angelina and Velvet, the most comically horrendous television you've ever seen. The blonde said, I've got to step away from being a professional here and voice my opinion. She was appalled that they had made fun of Roxy. They'd been so mean to her. They got into a huge bitchy argument. The bad girl threatened to shave her bald. And uh, and that was that. Just hideous. It's horrible. Hideous. Horrible acting by all three of them. This, this should never have aired. I don't know why. It's not live. It's not that they didn't have a chance to say, you know what? This is bad. Let's air another Slammiversary promo instead. No. no, they put this on TV. Let's have Velvet Sky seeing b and <laughs> other assorted atrocities. No good. Vince, your atrocities are worse in that uh, perspective. I'm not a national TV. Well, I'm on this wacky internet show. Velvet and Angelina against Roxy and ODB. Actually, did, since you brought it up, I wasn't going to let it slide, but yes, when Velvet Sky said biatch, my first thought was, wow, that must be how everyone else feels when I say true dash. Yes. <laughs> the same thing. I'll try to avoid it. You need to apologize to everybody for that. I apologize for... No, I'm not going to apologize for being myself. I will try to make a change. Roxy is no longer a voodoo chick. She has now stolen Ashley's weird-ass rocker gimmick, and God bless her, but she needs some hair now. This look does not work. Even as a voodoo chick, I thought, that's a pretty girl. Now, she's a bald girl with a big wound on the top of her head. People are going to get mad, but she looks like a neo-Nazi. Well, yeah. It's just... She looks like a skinhead. They save their heads. It's not working. It, it won't and last forever. with the exception of Angelina, everybody in this match 
fucking sucked. Yes. I always, uh, Roxy's always been pretty damn good. She was horrible tonight. ODB has been fine. ODB was horrible. She was, ODB was out there doing drop kicks to the knee. And I don't mean the lucha spot where you throw a drop kick to someone's knee. She was aiming for the head or chest area and hitting them in the knee. Velvet actually was just as bad as always, so that may have been an improvement. Sure. And Angelina uh, was fine. Yeah. We we had uh, Angelina booting ODB in the breasts into a sunset flip by Velvet for the pin. So ODB pinned by Velvet Sky. Clean. Yes. How her star has fallen. <laughs> she is no longer the next whatever. Jesus. But, yeah, this is this is bad in every way. We had a Christian and a Rhino promo. Christian called Booker a piece of shit. And then we had the greatest moment in the history of, of Impact. Rhino grabbed the mic, and he was cutting this angry promo. But as he grabbed the mic, the generic blonde had a death grip on it. He tried to snatch it from her, but she just wouldn't let go for real. Rhino was not strong enough to pull this microphone away. No. And, and finally, he kept pulling and pulling, and she wouldn't let go. And he finally turned to her, and he said, and I quote, let go of the microphone, honey. <laughs> it was very polite, but very firm. Yes. <laughs> she needed to let go of this right now. We laughed. We howled. We played it over and over again. It got better every time. Why do wrestling companies hire people that have no fucking idea what they're doing? And, and then give them no instruction. And can't do their job. It's not like she was bad for a week and has been slowly improving. No. she's uh, She started at zero and is now at zero. Oh, God. It just amazes me. It just amazes me. So then we had Rhino, Christian, and Joe versus Team 3D and Booker T. Pretty fun match right here. Rhino, uh, heat on him, and then he hit a big-ass spine buster on Bubba in his generous midsection, as Tanae explained it. That means large gut. Joe made the hot tag, six-way. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the six-way, Joe just pinned Devon Dudley with a power slam. <laughs> just power slammed him like he does in every match, and this time Devon did not have the power to lift a shoulder up. Oh. I don't know. I guess. It was fine. They, they, they did a lot of crowd brawling, but it was a... On intense six man tag. The rest of the on the show is mostly okay. Yeah. With the exception of that women's tag match was blue. But it, it was it was fine. And it then we had the great finish. angle. Oh, the yeah. great angle. Team three D went and grabbed uh Hector Guerrero. I guess mad because LAX won and, and Hector I guess in some way I don't know what he He's did. their manager. Didn't he turn somebody over? Was that in their match? That was in AJ Styles. I don't remember. But uh he's also one of these Spanish broadcasters. He's sure. doing double duty. So they beat him up and they beat him up. And they beat him up. And I sat there and I thought, where the fuck are the three baby faces I just saw in the ring who had just won this match? They cut to a shot and they were standing there oblivious. They didn't see the the uh, near riot in the crowd as, as the three giant men beat up Hector Guerrero. Mm -hmm. So finally they started to go and the announcers claimed Booker, all by himself, was holding off all three men with one steel chair. Yeah. There's apparently no other chairs in the impact zone. No, just the one. Booker got it. The three the three baby faces could not grab chairs and, and make the save for the, the their Mexican friend. So finally the heels ran off into the night and left Hector a bloody mess and then I had another thought. Where the fuck was <laughs> LAX? Where were Hernandez and Homicide and Salinas? This man was being beaten unmercifully and nobody was there to make the save for him. Not only was he being beaten unmercifully, he was being beaten unmercifully, unmercifully first at the announce desk, then they threw him over to a wall, and then they threw him right underneath the giant LAX banner. Yes. They were in their casa. Yeah. <laughs> they never showed up. This was dumb. I've seen dumber shows. I've got to give this show. I can't hate the show. No. There, I, there's I, too I, much good wrestling. I had, I had fun watching it, and most of the bad stuff was funny bad. You know, it's, it's, it's actually, this should tell you everything you need to know. The women's match was fucking awesome with, with, with Kong and Gale. Uh, there were at least two other matches that I gave two thumbs up to. And still as a whole, I give this show a thumbs in the middle. That should tell you how awful everything else was on this program. Pretty much. God. Pretty much.